My name is Darian Wheeler. I'm a junior at Cornell College, and I play for the Overwatch and Smash Ultimate team there. I also play football, and I enjoy playing Ultimate Frisbee as well. Wow, how do you have time for all that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to prioritize, right? Yeah. So how long have you been playing Overwatch and Smash, you said? Overwatch, I started playing the summer before I came to Cornell, which was in 2019. And since then, I've gone from bronze the master's ranking just by being on the team um and smash i started when the game first came out but i haven't played the game competitively until around the end of last year and what made you want to start competing at the time our esports coach we just started getting into like big tournaments and stuff and so the t we went to a tournament where one of the pgr one of the top 50 players in the world was appearing and we played him and it was not pretty it was uh we got stomped into the dirt and so <laughs> that I, I didn't like that so i was i said you know what i'm gonna get better i'm gonna play better and i'm gonna figure out how to how to beat someone like that because that that was not fun and what have you done to get better at the game like what kind of strategies do you use we have weekly practices we have monday thursday and friday we practice uh, I play by myself, of course. I go to tournaments. And from these tournaments against good players, I take the film that I get the, and I VOD review it, learn what I could have done better, um, and figure out things like positioning, usage of abilities, you know, that type of thing. So what do you think about your team? How does it feel to be a part of an esports team? And do you guys all get along? Are you guys friends? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. We... Like if we're all in the room together, we're we're just joking around. We're, which sometimes makes it hard to practice because it's it's very hard. It's hard to get serious when it's uh really goofy like that. But I love being on the team. It's this is like one of the reasons I stayed on the esports team, despite because we had a director change. Despite the director change was because I just love the team. That's really good. You guys support each other and all that. That's awesome. You said you've gone to competitions and stuff. Well, how often do you think you game a week? How many hours do you think you play a week? Maybe over 24, maybe 30, 30 hours. It's a lot of time. You play Smash and Overwatch. Which one do you like better and why? I really like Smash better. One, I've always, fighting games have always been my thing before shooters, so that's part of it. And I'm much better at Smash than I am at Overwatch. It's... Overwatch is more of a team-based game, so your individual performance matters a lot less. Um, but Smash, everything that you do, it's, it's all on you, so you can always improve on that. And I know you've been to competitions and stuff before, but do you still get nervous when you're about to compete, or are you pretty confident? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I get I get nervous still. It's um, It depends, though. Uh. You know, you, I used to have music playing, you know, calm my nerves. But especially if I'm going against a player I who I know is very high ranked, very well known, very good. In tense situations, I'll always uh, just get nervous and it just it just doesn't go well if that happens. But yeah, I still get nervous. Yeah, I think that's natural, though. Are there any specific teams or schools that your team kind of watches out for or that you really want to beat? Iowa State, their team is crazy. So they have most of the top ranking players in Iowa. So <laughs> those guys are, they have a big target on their backs. K 
can you tell me a little bit about what you think about CECC and do you think your team will go to Atlanta? Currently our team is we're going over a massive overhaul because we're just we're down a lot of players to transfers and other things but it's still possible I think we can do it. Okay yeah we hope to see you there. <laughs> um, backtracking a little bit what are you studying in school what's your major? Uh, biochemistry. Okay. Jeez, you do it all. What the heck? <laughs> what do you plan to do with biochemistry? And do you ever see any overlap between what you're learning in school and esports? My initial plans were to possibly go into medicine, but I'm now I'm leaning to more towards uh, biochemical research. So I I don't know if that overlaps somehow, but if it can, I, that'd be great. Would you ever want to be an esports coach? Of course. It's all, it's so fun. It's so fun. Yeah, when you learn about the Good evening. Welcome to the ECAC Fall Regular Season Week 3. This uh, tonight we have Loyola Green versus Hassan University. My name is Robert. I'm part commentating today with my friend Joey. Joey, how are you doing? Robert, I am doing absolutely fantastic. Today we have a Hassan three-on-three crew battle best out of three. That's so amazing. Have, it, that is amazing. <laughs> What's a crew battle? So, so crew battle is each each team has three players that have three stocks. You get, the main goal is to get rid of all nine stocks on whatever side, and that team gains their point. Baller. Well, seems simple enough. Stocks do actually carry over. So let's say I beat someone with like with two stocks remaining, I carry those two stocks over to my next match. Super cool. So then it's do the other people drop any, or do you drop any? You, if if someone takes out. If someone takes out one of your stocks and you're going on to the next match, you must block that stock. Baller. Sounds like a plan. Seems simple enough. And I think everybody's ready from what I'm hearing. Oh, they're and all it's ready? It's about all right. to start. Holy cow. I thought it'd be more time. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm amped up. This, Who do you want to win tonight? A... Who, who, who do I want to win? Yep. I'm, um, I'm personally voting towards Layola. Personally, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, that 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 is a hundred percent fine. Yeah, no, absolutely. Even though we're in the Hudson Green right now, I'm, I just you, get you a know, feeling. you know, if I just have a feeling. And speaking of feelings, it looks like we're starting out with Falcon versus Isabel. Falcon versus Isabel on Town and City. Starting out with Blonde versus Savvy J. I like it. Ah. Getting quite the trades right now. Very interesting. I like the up smash. Yep, Isabel's going to want to just keep back and just start setting up a try so Falcon just cannot get in. Absolutely. Stay away as far as possible. Falcon's, Falcon's just not getting trying to find any way in there. And, Absolutely. And oh, that oh, forward air is going to take it. I'll take that first stock. Absolutely. Mm. Plenty of jabs going around by Falcon Plenty right now. Plenty of jabs going around. Seems like Falcon only just get out some jabs. Absolutely. Open that Solid back air, though. Almost taking it. Looks like Isabel's going to want to play more towards the middle. A little bit more towards the middle of the stage. Absolutely. Looking like still wants to kill off the top. Getting those up airs. Holy cow. I might want to just keep Isabel, just try to get her off stage. For just sure. So just so, like, like an up, up B like that. Yeah, up special will take it, absolutely. Blonde has certainly got to be a little bit worried. You could be a little bit worried, but just one, one good hit. Absolutely, can easily come back from this. 
that sauce almost stealing the stock, but luckily not. Nope. Oh, How, again. That forward air once again will though, holy cow. That, that forward air is, is quite deceitful. <laughs> Fishing rod consistently catching. Fishing rod and Lloyds. Oh my lord, the Lloyds into up air. Plenty of those are going around. Holy cow. Oh. <laughs> just talking, just seem, just can't seem to get in. I would have to be careful about those Lloyds because I. Those can be pretty, pretty deceitful if you just don't know where it's coming up. Absolutely, and they're coming up everywhere right now. And he is going to recover. He's going to recover. Oh, but but that, that forward, forward smash. Ass. Yep, that forward smash will take it. Interesting. Coming on to here, what are we looking at for the next match? What do you feel? Um, Isabel certainly either... seems very strong right now. She does seem very strong. You, you probably want someone who can get in might have might need some uh let's say some some armor moves good good but basically just like very good data just just to keep isabel just off the ground absolutely really something to, to stay ground. away from the projectiles and keep her off the ground i completely agree any bets for the next stage um, what do you think would be best in this situation? The best stage? Yeah, seeing that Hassan is going to be picking. Probably probably something like very consistent platforms. Town and Cities definitely has some like very odd platforms. If you probably get something consistent, you can very much easily get some nice combos, but that also brings in the situation of Isabella being easier to kill off the top. Absolutely, I completely like that. Maybe something like a Smashville or Hollow Bastion might be a good bet. I could totally see that as well. Something where the... Yeah. Nope, I like it. And I'm getting insider information that it is going to be Town and City, so you may have something going on. Oh, this this might be this might be an interesting. Waiting for the players to come in. Just waiting. Hey, hey, they, they need to check. They get everything all set and good. For sure, for sure. I don't want to play with the wrong control schemes. <laughs> that would be bad. Would not be the first time. However, it's not recommended. All right. So the next. Next character is going to be Byleth. I believe this is Bounce. Two, one, go. I would say it is Bounce. Bounce does take the Byleth quite often. So we're starting out with Isabel losing one stock. Down one stock, but they still have two, two people b behind them, so it's not... Hudson is down two stocks, but, you know, anything could be possible. Absolutely, we've seen it plenty of times. Oh, trying to catch with it down, down. Just, yeah just doesn't just just hits the upbeat absolutely isabel consistently trying to juggle once again oh but by trying, upbeat, but doesn't get anything off of that nope nothing off of it i like the attempt though Ilyas is just Ilyas is actually a pretty good pick because Ilyas is just going to start facing out with those forward airs and back airs. I completely agree. And Isabel can't really do too much when she's super close in, so. Yeah, he, he's just got to set up and it's. Ilyas just got to close in and just not have that thing. But oh, that. That clash with the, I believe, forward smash? Yeah, I think so. With the gyro right in the background. But oh, that but, back but that air back will air. take it. I do like that a lot. Heading into the next stock, the arrow that was in the pocket is now gone. That, that might have been lo that might have been important. Might have been crucial. Up there. 
I like how these both of these characters do want you up in the air. It's very Just interesting to try to see them challenge for that. Oh, I'm trying to get a, a nice Amir. Absolutely. Not working out in this situation, though. I respect the commitment. Down smash, Down though. Smash it does connect. will take it. Holy cow. And that was... That was nice. Absolutely. Loyola only has one stock lead right now. Whoa. Yeah, absolutely. Going into the next match, leading on from Byleth. Any bets on who we'll see? Uh oh. Any solid bets? Any low bets? <laughs> no bets. What? Are we good now? Yeah, we're doing great. Okay. No nothing happened, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the next match against Byleth. What are you feeling? Let's see. Byleth is a really nice for, s for spacing out, but... It is pretty hard trying to get in if you have, like, a nice heavy character, so... I, you know, I used to just want to camp out Byleth. Absolutely. I do like that idea a lot. Especially if it's too heavy of a character, it can be juggled very easily. Exactly. Yep, so I'll be very interested to see who Loyola is picking. And it looks like we are going to PS2. Ooh, PS2. Yep. A nice pick. Absolutely. JV is coming in. Not too familiar with JV. However, Bounce certainly has been playing for quite a while now. He has been playing for at least one year. Absolutely. And at least today, on top of that. However... Yeah, at least he's... <laughs> continuing with the Byleth, though. Yeah. That's the character hop. I'm surprised we don't see the Roy today. However, Byleth is just as awesome. Bounce has a very much diverse set of characters, so he could play a, a pretty good amount of... Absolutely, very, People. yeah, very yeah. talented. Yep, I completely agree. Waiting for the next match to start. Still waiting on saving. Mm. Any thoughts about more matchups against Byleth? We talked about camping earlier. Yeah, we, we talk, there could be some good camping, but if you just if you just have like really good frame data, you can just like just get in without like just get into Byleth without making making him or her, you know, do anything with like forward air or back air. Completely agree, and Byleth is a slower character overall anyway, so anything that's faster can certainly yeah. catch Byleth off guard. Of course. So I'll be very interested to see whether it's a fast character or a projectile. Either could work in this situation. Either could work with PS2. PS2 is a very neutral yeah. stage, so. The, the very neutral stage, so. Absolutely. Oh, and we're going with Lucina. Lucina. Yep. So going on the faster side. I'll be very interested to see how this goes. It'll be a very interesting match. And once again, this is JV versus Bounce. Three, two, one, go. Exactly. Starting out. Oh. Bounce, no, bounce have... is down one stock. Absolutely. So. Just about to mention that. Going with a quick taunt. Perfect. Taunt. Starting. So I'd like to see how, how Lucina uh, definitely deals with Byleths. Absolutely. Um, she does have the lead right now, but I'll be very interested to see how she continues to play from here on. Exactly. Probably thinking, oh, that, that oh, forward smash, smash almost taking it, going very deep, not getting anything off of it. However, I like the idea. I'd say they picked Lucina just for some nice, consistent moves, thinking that Lucina's moves will get out slightly quicker than Byleth's, Byleth's slightly slower moves. Absolutely. I completely agree. Being able to get the in bounce, is a very good thing. The bounce is very precise and will, does know how to play around around Lucina's range. Absolutely. Not only that, but he knows his own range. 
which can be very useful in this situation. Everything's very even right now. Very trading light attacks. Except yeah, for that, that up, up smash. Oh, oh my that nice up smash. That that'll certainly even up the stocks. Let's see. Oh, Lucina and forward smash. Forward smash certainly will there, take that as well at 92 percent, without a doubt. Oh yeah. I certainly would say that this stage isn't in either character's favor or detriment. It's very neutral in this situation. It is a very neutral thing. Tries goes for down air, but but, DI, but Lucina dies correctly. Absolutely. Still getting those consistent follow-ups with his attacks, however. I'd be very surprised if that one worked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Down air almost down shield. Absolutely. This is a whole down air fair right now. Holy cow. Yeah, that's all, but not recover. I couldn't recover. Going into the last stock now. He yeah, definitely just really needs to get in. Very much hobbling with her aerials. Absolutely. Does have the slight lead right now, but that can easily be thrown, thrown against the other direction. Was it up smash up almost smash. taking it. Holy cow, missing the tech. But you know, good violet throw and an up is Sometimes it's all it takes. A lot of damage. Absolutely. I was recovering. Just trying to keep pressure, trying to get Lucina just not to stay on the ground. Of course, of course. Lucina does have the middle of the stage right now. Having some advantage. Yeah, that's a little, ma Ooh. little stage control. Back throw, trying to continue to get. Oh, oh like neutral holy B. cow! Neutral B will take it. it. Yeah. Though, the bounce did lose. This is still very close. It's four stocks to three. So. Absolutely. Hassan can easily come back from this. This is not an impossible comeback. Yep. Nothing is impossible. Completely agree. Once again, have seen this plenty of times. Going into this, I'll be very interested to see who, who is playing next against the Lucina. And it looks like it's the man himself, G Cap. Oh, the G Cap's coming in. The man. The, the man. The man. The legend. The wolf. <laughs> He is a wolf player. Absolutely. Throwing out neutral airs like it is candy. <laughs> a bit sweet. Absolutely. Maybe a bit sour, too. Plenty sour, without a doubt. GCAP is ranked in Maine and has been ranked in New Hampshire as well before. So he, he is, safe to say, pretty good. He's got a lot of experience. Absolutely, plenty of experience under his belt. So what's so what stage do you think would probably be the best optimal for Wolf? For Wolf, I mean, any of them could work, but he'll certainly be going, looking for either. Oh, man, I don't know actually, because he can easily Lucina. kill horizontally with his down smash, but also looking for up smash confirms as well. Yeah. But it does look like it's going to be small battlefield. So basically, uh, PS2 again. <laughs> no, no, it's sm it's slightly smaller. Oh, of course, <laughs> smaller PS2. The PS2 without the charm. Lower. <laughs> All right, so we do have Lucina dropping two at the beginning, and once again, this is a JV versus G Cap. Just like I said, looking for those yeah. neutral airs already, even though the match hasn't even started. <laughs> exactly. Just you gotta, you gotta fish whatever you can. Absolutely. Starting now. Plenty right of now, distance just, between the two. Taking what he can with the lasers. Just trying to get the damage. Absolutely. Missing the tech. Going with a down Miss, smash. Missing the tech with a down yep. smash. <laughs> More rolls in a bakery right now. It's going all over the place. Exactly. Almost taking like, it. I'm, Holy cow. Almost take it. 
Incredibly Fool's close. Just like, I'm, I'm an advantage. I'm just going to... I can just sit here and w wait for you to do something. Absolutely. Only 1.2% on and, G Cap, and the match is over. And so we're, go we're going down to the final character for Loyola. Incredibly even right now. Holy cow. Okay. Let us see. Um, going into the last match. Against Wolf, what do you feel? Wolf, is, Wolf has a very good like kit to be yeah, up close and personal. Incredibly all around. Dial. Absolutely. He has it all. You probably, you probably want someone who has a nice... A slightly quicker but still can still stun wolf absolutely man with some i'd say just a character that you're super comfortable with at this point just because he has so many advantages um something with a bit more range i suppose just having a bit more range will be very good for just not letting wolf get in absolutely that's Getting what i'm thinking get those combos let's see Going into the last some, match. Probably someone who has a very decent air game to just just get it out. It looks like Irie is going in. Interesting. I'll be very interested to see how this goes. This will be very tense. Oh, without a doubt. However, this is only the first round. Exactly. If, yep. if you lose two or if three. you lose one right now, you you got two other games to make it back. Absolutely. At least one. <laughs> at least one. There's at least one more. Of course. Who am I kidding? I want a lot. Might as well for the content. Oh, of course for the content. Of course. Let's see. Any other interesting facts you can think about GCAP in this downtime? Um, I know he he's very experienced, very committed to the game. Oh, without a doubt. This is someone you really want to be looking out for when with matchups. Not only that, but I heard he might as well be sponsored by Domino's at this point because he does go there oh. all the time. <laughs> yeah. He does. He does like Domino's. He does like Domino's. He do I, I've heard that he has a gift card for Domino's Pizza. Does he really? That's crazy. He does. You know what he should have? He should have two gift cards at this point. Oh, <laughs> and Savy coming back in. Let's see. What are we thinking? Besides Domino's, of course. I've got, I've got, oh, I mean, uh, of course Domino's, but what about... What stage would would be really good just to just... Just put Wolf in a just disadvantage. A disadvantage? Very easy. Very easily disadvantaged. I don't know. Would town work in this situation? Just for how big it is? Trying to have room to keep him to stay away, potentially? Yeah, trying to trying to just close the gap that is just a bit big and hard might, might be the right call. Absolutely. Even still, though, we are going oh. PS2 with a Samus. So it the is Samus. going with a projectile. Very projectile. Very much not going to want to go in. Very Just gonna sit back. Try to stay as far away as they can. And then far away, hopefully getting close enough for some for some grabs. Absolutely. And it's starting right out. Nobody has to drop any stocks. So this is a very good situation for both teams. However, only one can come out. Well, only one team can, in fact, win the set. Going very low there. Wolf like, just getting, just catching, catching Irie just going in, not take, seeming to get anything off. Absolutely. Taking whatever percentage you can. Looking for a follow-up after the forward throw, however, not getting anything as well. No tech situation. Using, using up these out of shield for Sam is going to be very, very effective, good get off me tool. Without a doubt. In any situation. But also can kill at high percent. So will that up smash, though. Samus definitely has to look out for that. 
plenty of projectiles being thrown around. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Incredibly. Oddly even right now, even though Samus yeah. does have double the percentage, oh, but the dash attack will saying. take it. It just, just gets that one dash attack. Absolutely. Reflecting the projectiles as well. And in there. <laughs> yeah. Ex Looks like Samus is definitely just going to want to sit, stay back and just wait. Wait for GCAP to advance. Absolutely. Waiting for any opening just like that. Just Trying to get any anything opening. off. Doing up throw, but it's not going to kill. Not yet. Just a little bit later, percentage wise. Forward smash just missing. Holy cow. That was great yep. aside. These circle hitboxes can be deceitful. Absolutely. I were just trying to, probably just trying to get in for a grab and just, just do taking, another up taking throw. the stop, but G Cab's just not going to have that. Absolutely. Just trading stray attacks. This will not take it. Holy cow. Incredibly nope. stubborn. Still alive at oh, 180. My Still God. trying to fish. Fish for the grabs, but just not getting them. Not getting them. And these are yeah, just trying to keep trying to keep Irie just off stage. Absolutely. Just not being able to get anything, no no grabs, no nothing, but that up up throw is gonna take that. Absolutely, it's been long enough. Irie's going to be being be very careful. Really nuts needs to be sticking back. But oh, Absolutely. That up smash is huge, though, and it has a pretty darn good scoop. Got a nice scoop. Oh, without a doubt. And both of them just trying to get in. Try, just trying, trying to, to get Trying anything. to start a combo. Absolutely. Just trying to, just trying to get something. Stray attacks all around. Not too much leading from them. Except for a couple forward airs, apparently. <laughs> Just a few of those. Try, try and just keep trying to keep Irie off stage, but just not gonna be happening with down smash. Not quite. Nice down air into up air chain. Nice little small combo. But they're far away once again. They're far away. No, no. Oh. no. I just does not want to get in. And all oh, that nice that, back air. That back air is juicy and will absolutely take it. And GCAP takes it with two stocks remaining. And that is the first set. That is the first set of potentially three. Could be two. Potentially two or three. Going into the next one, do you see any changes with the starters? Um... I don't know if they want to keep they want to keep Isabel in. Um, I could see it working. They, they might they might they might be the start with Falcon again on Hassan. I could absolutely see that the Falcon was very well. It's a very you know nice it was to... very good starter just to see what's going on. However, I'll be very interested to see how it'll go again against Isabel just in case. But using my little cheat sheet by looking right beside me, I do see <laughs> that uh, that a bounce is going back in, going with yeah, the violet once thinking, again. I was thinking bounce might be a good option as well. Bounce is very much did defeat the Isabel and did get a few stocks off <laughs> off the Lucina, so it was it was a very nice, very nice like nice, you know, get rid of all the stocks. <laughs> Absolutely, it worked very Character. well last time. So maybe starting out, maybe just just trying to get rid of the Isabel and seeing maybe if Blonde goes in second, if if they're gonna pull out Lucina again. Absolutely, it'll be very interesting to see how the lineup changes after this. Looks like it is going to be a few minute break, real quick. Just a few. What are we feeling? I'm feeling good for this next round. 
The I'm first the round was actually really good. We started yeah, nice. with uh, Loyola in their favor, stock-wise, but it flipped around right by the end. It, it came incredibly it just took even. took it right back. Absolutely. I'd still say it's a very even matchup between these two. Yeah. If Loyola can definitely, definitely think, like, this is about who's going to be playing in what order, they could probably definitely take game two. Absolutely. And speaking of game two, it does look like we're going to take a small break for a minute. So if you don't want to go anywhere, which you shouldn't go anywhere, this is Smash Bros. after all, yeah, you, you we will cut anywhere. back with more Super Smash Bros. Ultimate action. Any closing words for a second, Joey? Uh, no. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and you find time between... Football in the ultimate frisbee. Maybe you can be an esports coach. <laughs> uh, I'll find time to do it all, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Are there any players on your team that stick out to you, whether it be a success story, their growth, or even yourself, uh, that you want to talk about? Nah. Uh, let's see. Well, of course, myself is, is a good success story, I guess. Because when I joined the Smash and Overwatch team in 2019, I was garbage. Like. It, it was it was bad. Like I said earlier, I was bronze rank in Overwatch, which lowest possible rank. It's just it's terrible down there. And then from there, I went to Masters, which is the second highest rank, which is just ridiculous. And then in Smash, I was also bad. So, and now I'm one of the top ranking players in Iowa. So it's yeah, it's pretty good. So, what has been your proudest? moment or specific moment i know you jumped ranks there but have there any been has there been any specific moments in a game or tournament that really you're proud of it was last year during the we had a smash tournament uh smash ultimate tournament it was a wi-fi tournament to qualify for the national uh region national uh part of it we needed to beat this one school and the school had some really good players like they had i think they had a link player and I forget the rest of them, but... And we're back! Joey, how was the muffin? That, that, that was nice. That was a very long break. Absolutely. I completely <laughs> agree. You could do a lot in that small break. I, I could have done a, so much. Absolutely. Like, play a whole round of Super Smash Bros. I which could, I guess I is not being up. played right now, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm very excited to see this next round, though. Incredibly, I even am... once again, cannot state that enough. I, I'm just, I'm just so excited. I want to see if Loyola can definitely just, just say, "Hey, we are dead. We are even matchup. It is a very close between the two of us." And just see a nice game two. Absolutely. And speaking of game two, here we go, hopping right into it. Looks like we have Sam Kalta versus Bounce. A Ness We're this time. A Ness. Mm. How do you feel about Ness? Especially in this matchup right here. Um, Ness got Ness's got a bit of range. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's the best option because Violet just has, I think, just has a slightly bit more range. But Absolutely. definitely has. But Ness definitely does have some nice um, edge guarding with his down smash and up smash. Without a doubt, Byleth is the distance demon. However, it certainly can work into Ness's favor as well. Get a nice, nice dash attack. Um, absolutely. For whatever reason, it's an incredibly good move on Byleth, even though you would not expect it. <laughs> it. It is a very, it's very deceitful. Absolutely, very... way more powerful than you would think it is. Unlike oh, oh, hi. oh, but that nice the, neutral be off stage. Beautiful snipe. You love to see that one. Holy cow. But bounce is still high. No, oh, without a doubt. Let's see. Nice forward air. Not quite taking it, though. Forward air not getting in. Plenty of PK just... fires going around. Exactly, but Bounce is just trying to get in, get that nice up air. Oh, but that. 
Holy Tries cow. Tries to go in, but it does get punished. Absolutely. Speaking of punish, here comes more PK fires. <laughs> Very solid move. It can loot, lead into a lot of things. Lead into a lot. And, and it is a good, quick move just to put push out against Byleth. Absolutely. Especially due to Byleth's lower moveset. The Byleth just, just has just have some things like... Forward air, sour spot, definitely has... Definitely a very nice move for low knockback combo potential. Absolutely. And two framing off the ledge with a down tilt will always work as well. Especially since Ness's jump is so weird and commonly gets him above the stage. Very rear jump. Very... It's a very floaty jump. Absolutely. Almost Sora like before Sora happened. Another oh, and snipe? Another one! What is this dude on tonight? I mean, it's it's a very good strategy because Ness can only, from out there, he has to recover with PK Sunder, which is very predictable, very, very much um, slow fall. So it's very nice to just catch that. Absolutely, and it would put it right into the exact same situation. And the oh, forward and a smash, forward smash, taking it. Holy cow! Oh. Fantastic plays from Bounce. I think this entire match was. It, it was something. That was dirty. That was it disgusting, was and match. that was the perfect way to close out of that first match. Going into the next one, what are you feeling? Who do you think we see return? Um, We had not seen Sam Calta before, so we have everybody before this coming back. Exactly. Um, def Definitely not going to be Isabel. Doesn't seem like didn't really work well last time. Absolutely, and I doubt they would go right into the same thing once again. Switching, so they they might go over to Lucina. Absolutely, it worked very well last time, so I could totally see it working well once more. However, Bounce seems much more confident this time, so it'll be very it interesting to see how that affects his gameplay. Yeah, after. After this match, he might have might have a bit of confidence, which could be both a good or a bad thing. Oh, without a doubt. It is quite something what confidence can do. Positively and negatively to one's ego. Bans are happening right now. I have no word on what the stage is. Never mind. I have word on what the stage is. Going to Kalos. Oh, we're going to Kalos. Going to Kalos. Not a bad pick good. for a counter pick. Exactly. It's going to be very good very good edges where Byleth usually likes to kill off the top. Absolutely. And we do have Savvy going back in. So Ooh. I think you are right with the Lucina. So, yeah, Lucina is probably just definitely going to want to get bounce out. Without a doubt. Just closing in that distance. Did have a bit of luck last time. It's about about the same as well. It bounces, in fact, down a stock. Absolutely. So it's about the same matchup last time going in. So might be able to take down bounce. Yep. No, I'll be very interested to see how this goes. And speaking of going, it looks like we are about to. Going. Oh, the Isabel. Isabel. Interesting. No, nope, this is not what I expected. I mean, if this bell can definitely, if Savvy can just, just avoid Byleth's attacks and just start setting up the Lloyds and just fishing rod, it could be favorable. Absolutely. We'll see how well they can adapt, both with a different character. Well, not different character, but different stage. I'd just say. <laughs> dragged out into the gyro. Interesting. Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly in Bounce's favor, but that's okay. Absolutely throwing out all the projectiles. Very much. Very much. Definitely. Okay. Definitely seeing a very, very patient Isabel. Very much setting up. Without a doubt. I almost say it's more patient than it was last time. 
Don't quote me on that. Trying to do a down smash, but just doesn't cover the very edge of the ledge. Looking for the back air? Potentially not. Ooh, down, down, down smash. smash almost almost taking kill. it. Almost. Not quite. It seems most of Ooh, these moves trying, are just trying almost. Trying to punish with the down air. Just not, not quite getting it. That. Forward air is gonna... We've seen it take plenty of stocks so far today, and there goes another one. So it's a very quick and reliable move. Without a doubt. Very strong once it's up close next to the opponent. Let's see. Isabel just trying to get trying to get nice combos while Bounce is just trying to get in for that kill. Absolutely. Teching in could have been a very bad situation, but luckily just far could enough away from the gyro. Hmm. Isabel just getting getting those fishing rods, just definitely just staying back, keeping calm. Without trying, a doubt. Trying to get Bounce off stage. Because Bounce does have one stock left. There's one stock left. Getting off the, the snipe, but... Oh, but that oh. down air is definitely going to do it. Beautiful. Definitely got the right. Absolutely. And it was an untackable situation. That was very untackable. Bounce needs to be very careful because he's at 100%. Absolutely. And things like that from now on will he, start he, killing. Exactly. He de He's definitely going to want to get in. And Isabel could just deny him from getting in and just, just looking very dire. That one was unbelievable. I think that one was all uncalled for, honestly. And that one as well. Now, <laughs> Plenty of fishing rods going around. Very, very much fishing rods. Very much just keeping back and definitely getting... Seeing the dead succeeding and getting getting those kills that was really needed. Absolutely. And I thought Kalos had a higher ceiling. But it seems like that fishing rod is just very powerful when using the up throw. It is a very powerful... I think it's a command grab. I'm pretty sure it is, even though it can't go through shield. So it's like kind of a command grab. It's kind of like Terry's super, super special. Yeah. Yeah, which is very interesting. Probably better off that way, though. Or else we'd probably see more kills just like those. Yeah, so what do you think would, should be going in next? I'm not thinking Blonde should be going in. I completely agree. I don't think Blonde will go back into this matchup one more time. But I do think... Yeah, what happened last time definitely not going to be there. But Absolutely. who do you think is going to be in? I feel like they're going to save G Cab for the end one more time. They de they definitely like to keep keep G Bag as G Cab as their back pocket, right at the end. And it looks like it is going to be MG One hmm. or Hi, my name is Ness. I guess that works hi, too. Hi, exactly. Yeah, Hi, my name is Ness. That's a much that's a much better tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he gives me a sly I, I smile. I think of that one. Absolutely, I like that one. Very creative. Do you think we're gonna see the Ness? It is a good possibility. I know he mostly plays me brawler, but I'll be very interested to see what comes out of it, and also what stage they're going yeah. to pick. You probably definitely need someone who wants to get up close. Definitely going to want to use those platforms, too. Definitely want the platforms. Just chain you up and just kill you off the top. Absolutely. And it looks like it's going to be Yoshi's. Very interesting Ooh. pick. Ooh, uh, Yoshi's. It's a very... Not very... the pick I would have chosen, just because I don't like yeah, Yoshi's. No. However... The, they... th those, those little edges, they're very... It can be very wonky. Oh, without a doubt. The slight tilt in each of them. Mm. Mm. Sometime today, maybe. Sometime. And we're looking at one stock down for uh, one Savi, correct? Yes. We were looking one stock down. It's going to be very nice. Interesting. 
So we are getting me brawler. Oh, we are getting. Yep, me we brawler. are getting me brawler. The classic. The it's, name does this, lie, but it, that's okay. The stage is not bad for for me brawlers. There's you got those three platforms. I do agree. Something very good to juggle with, especially for me brawler. Going to the next round. How do you feel? Isabel works on uh, Yoshi's. I feel like it'll work it, very it well in both more, favor. It could, it could definitely be well in both favor. I can see it be be good in me brawler if if Isabel can just not set up anything, which it also... tilts could hopefully help with. I would say. But we'll see how it works because the next match is starting now. And once again, this is Savi versus Hi, my name is Ness. Right. Just waiting for the SD. And there we go. Nope, there we go. Perfect. And now the match should start after a taunt. Beautiful. And here we go. Yoshi's. What an interesting pick for this matchup. It is, a, it is very interesting. Yeah. Voids are going to have very interesting things on, on the side, on the ledge. Going over the side V. Not that time, though. De definitely for still getting... As well, still getting a nice setup. Absolutely, just trading hits right now, though. Nothing too much. Nice counter, de defeating the nice Lloyd. Into the Lloyd. Yeah, no, that was very good. Breaking the Lloyd just in case, which we had not seen too much of in previous matches. So that is a very good idea. Yeah. Especially because Violet's down tilt could have taken care of that. However, it's good. all good. Coming back from Brawler. that, though. Ooh. Oh, no, that's not gonna do it. We brawlers just. If, if he wants to deal with those loads, he's got to get up close. Absolutely. Nothing but the fists. Nothing but the fists. Nothing but the fists. Very much trying to try to get something off the side of the stage. Absolutely. Trying to find that kill, even. At 108, most things will at this point. As long as he gets oh. to confirm into it. Trying to get, trying to get anything, getting a side B. Not gonna do it. Unfortunate SD. Ooh. But it happens. It's very even right now. So very even. Very much. And oh, but that, that nice off smash. Up uh, yes, up B. Looking nice very good. At the end, starting yes. to be nice. Seeing, those seeing Lloyds just, coming back again. Just getting those Lloyds right up there. Absolutely. Very nice spacing for both players right now. Very nice spacing, but me Brawler is definitely going to need to get in. Absolutely. He needs, he needs to get these nice dodges and just ooh, get right in, but it's just seeing very hard. Savvy's very much getting that. I mean, I think, oh, and, and that nice, up air, nice up air connect. Plenty of turnups on that as well. That does have a bit of RNG to it, but it worked very much in uh, Savi's favor that time. Savi's favor. It's looking very good for Loyola right now. They have four stocks. They have. They're up only four stocks, but we still have this last person. Hassan still has G three. Hassan still has three. I can confirm with my sources, and my sources are my own eyes, that it is going to be GCAP. Okay, we, we've so, seen how GCAP can just very much just melt some some people. Absolutely. We have not seen the Isabel yet today, though, however. So I'll be very interested to we, see how this goes this time. Wolf does have that reflector, which comes in very useful, especially due to how quick it comes in. Definitely, it's definitely gonna come down if Savvy can definitely get those fishing rods in and just 
keep throwing, but it also has to depend on the stage. Absolutely. Speaking of stages, what are you feeling? I'm feeling something with a high ceiling. Yeah, something good with a high ceiling. Isabel definitely loves to just kill on top, so... Absolutely. Trying to prevent that as much as possible will certainly nice work. high ceiling very much will will benefit GCAB. Absolutely. If I were a betting man, though, I bet it would be more neutral. Something like PS2. However, I could totally see something like Kalos come back one more time as well. I can definitely see Kalos coming back. Yep. Even still, though, it is PS2. Once again, confirming with my sources of my own eyes. So a nice another neutral stage. I'm very neutral stage. I can see it going in both favors. Be very even. Could be it. either way for any of them. Absolutely. But, you know, Savvy's down two stocks, so. And here we go. Wolf into the Isabel. G Cab versus Savvy. Savvy's been doing very good so far. This is the third player that they are on. Yeah, G Cap's definitely gonna be definitely gonna need to play a bit a bit safe. And there she goes. And there she goes. She's just <laughs> She's ascended. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and one more time. Oh, and another Beautiful. One. Okay. Well we see G Cap take the stock very quickly, like we did last time. Or will it take longer? What do you think? Just due to the different um, characters, different matchup. Hmm. I'm I'm not sure. Because obviously, I could, I could, G Cap will want to keep as many yeah, stocks as possible. It's definitely yeah. G Cap's favor. He's just not letting Savvy set up anything. Absolutely, trying to close in any distance that Savvy creates. This nice back air. Ooh, With the and down, and down smash, smash, and it does happen very quickly. Not very quick game. Very so quickly. We're, so we're down to. The, to Loyoyo's last character. I'm seeing a very familiar trend from last time. I don't know about you. <laughs> it's <is> very <laughs> similar, familiar, but well, Lo Loyoyo definitely just with their last character definitely just take out G Cab very easily. But or I, I absolutely we'll just take it. It's the question, the question of the century, if you will. <laughs> it is <laughs> the, the century. Century question. Uh, of course. Going into the final match, I feel something like PS2 or Small Battlefield once again. We did see that last time. We did. It's very, very even. It's very neutral for Basically, all characters. There are, there are three stocks to three stocks. I can see some them just going to a nice neutral stage. Totally. And speaking of neutral, we did not see enough neutral layers that last match. So I do hope we see some more. Are you, you're hoping for a few more neutral I'm hits? hoping for at least three or more. Are you going to start <laughs> counting them? We might as well. I think last time it was like seven. And we need at least double digits. I think that's what the last match was missing. Oh, that's it was just missing a lot, just a lot of those? Absolutely. I see. Waiting for the players to decide the map. Very important decision. It is pretty important. Without the map, they can't really play. So, nah, they just they just can't play the game if there's no map. No, not really. Unless they want to duke it out in the arena. But yeah, we're gonna are we gonna duke it out in the practice room? It could happen. You never oh, know. <laughs> they could just bust it out in the table turf battle from Splatoon Three. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very that is a very gentleman way of ending it. Oh, of course. Or, 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 hear me out. Just a good old-fashioned round of RPS. Some rock, paper, scissors for you. Yeah, that would be nice, but, you know, there could be a nice home run contest. Home run contest could absolutely work as well. Maybe they'll plug back in the Wii U's for some smash tour maybe uh, nah, if i may I'm say more, I'm more hey i'm more of a fan of smash run yeah you would be that's okay not everybody's that's a okay. winner <laughs> smash tour is not a winner but 
So yeah, Kazuya. Kazuya. That is a winner. That is a winner. Well, potentially in this case, hey, we'll see how well GCAP could deal with it. It's very, it's very much how. How can this Kazuya definitely hit some Electric Wind God Fist and just definitely combo? Absolutely, and we do have Javi once again, who's we the same person that ended the last round. So I'll be very interested to see how this goes. As I keep using saying. another character, Kazuya is very interesting because you do not want to get by hit by Electric Wind God Fist. You it only don't. takes a few hits and then you're dead. Your stock is gone. You can either be dead, but or you can also be at very high percent. Without a doubt. Either dead or close to being dead. Those forward airs are doing very they're nice very, work right now. They're very nice, but Kazuya is heavy, so oh, absolutely going to be a bit harder for, for, for GCAP just to launch him off. The Rage Drive rage has drive. been activated. Oh, but that, that side um, beat does that disable the up beat, though. Yeah. We do have GCAP leading was, with a stock right now, but that can be very quick nope. or... Oh, it just that misses almost, that down. Absolutely. Misses that down air. It causes a very precise character to master, because if you, if you can definitely just master Kazuya, it's just going to be very easy. Absolutely. Catching if I would the GCAP, I'd roll in. If I was GCAP, I definitely want to be very... Oh, that's another stock right there. Or G oh, can keep what he's doing. <laughs> he's doing what he's doing. He's got to be very careful about up smash, up air. Anything that Definitely could quickly kill. To... Exactly. Does not want to get in close. Not seeing many reflecting from Kazuya. We did. We do see the Ex Wind God Fist right there, though. We, we do. It just he's not seeming to get in. Absolutely. I feel, I feel like I feel like the reflector would just be very nice right now. I think it would be too. Ooh, Ooh an SD from from G Cab. Yep, it happens though. It, it, it always happens. Absolutely. Yeah. No, Kazuya does have the best reflector in the game, so I'd be very. I think it would work very much in his favor it would be if very, this happens. Very not, but, oh no! Man, oh, another just SD. barely not coming back. And that closes out the match. Hassan takes it 2-0. That was a very good round. That was a, it. Was a very good round. I because you couldn't get in and just couldn't get the combos off. Absolutely, the, and some unfortunate SDs as well. But it totally happens. Wonderful. Any closing remarks for the Hassan versus Loyola Green Smash tournament team? This whole match, I'm, even. I, I felt like we, we would have gone to a game three. They were very much playing well. It was it was pretty even. Absolutely. Kazuya just could not close the gap between uh, GCAP's Wolf. However, the, exactly. it happens. Absolutely. Wonderful. Any Anything else? Anything else? Anything for the ladies and gentlemen at home? Um... Not, not anything else except, Perfect. you know, hopefully everyone's having a good night. Absolutely. And who do we have coming up next, Joey? Well, coming up next, it'll the series will be from, I believe, Maurice College versus Albion College. Sounds about right to me. Awesome. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. And I exactly. hope you enjoy Smash night. Bros. <laughs> Smash Ultimate. S Smash Ultimate. Just getting started. Wonderful. Good night. That sauce almost stealing the stock, but luckily not. Nope. Oh, How, not that forward air once again will the holy cow coming up everywhere right now. And he is going to recover. He's gonna recover all oh, that, that forward ass. Yep, that forward's super close in, so Yeah, you just gotta set up and it's I was just gotta close in and just not have that thing, but oh, and that, oh, and that, that clash with the, I believe, Ward Smash? Yeah, I think so. With the gyro right in the background, but oh, that back air will air. take it. Absolutely, not working out in this situation though. I respect the commitment. Down Smash, Down though, smash it does connect. Down Smash will take it. Hold. Very, 
trading light attacks. Except yeah, for that, that up, up smash. Oh, oh that nice up smash. That, that'll certainly even up the stocks. Let's see. Oh, Lucina and forward smash? Forward smash certainly will. Bit. Down air almost down shield. Absolutely. This is a whole down air fair right now. Holy cow. Yeah, that's up, but not recovering on the stage it. right now. Having some advantage. That's a little mate. Ooh. No stage control. Back throw, trying to continue to get. Oh, oh neutral holy key. cow! Neutral, incredibly People close. Just like I'm, I'm an advantage. I'm just gonna, I can just sit here and w wait for you to do something. Absolutely, only 1.2 percent on and, G. Yep. Yep. <laughs> incredibly. Oddly even right now, even though Samus yeah. does have double the percentage, oh, but the dash attack I was will take. Far away once again. They're far away. No, none oh. of. Gyro just does not want to get in. And oh, that nice that, back air. That back air. More powerful than you would think it is. Unlike. Oh, that was very high. oh, but that nice but, neutral V. Oh, very rear jump. Very. It's a very floaty jump. Absolutely. Almost Sora like before Sora happened. Another so, uh, snipe. Another one. Slow fall, so it's very nice to just catch that. Absolutely. And it would put it right into the exact same situation. And the oh, forward, forward smash, forward smash. Taking it. His bounce does have one stock left. There's one stock left. Getting oh, the, the snipe, but... Oh, oh, but that oh. down air is definitely going to do it. Beautiful. Definitely got the right from getting in and just, just looking very dire. That one was unbelievable. I think that one was all uncalled for, honestly. And that one, I did. Yeah. Especially because Vilas down tilt could have taken care of that. However, it's good. all good. Coming back from Brawler. that, though, Ooh. oh, fortunate SD. Ooh. But it happens. It's very even right now. So very even. Very much. And oh, but that, that nice, off smash. Off these nice dodges and just ooh, get right in, but it's just seeing very hard. Savvy's very much getting that. I mean, I think, oh, and, and that nice. up air. Absolutely. Trying to close in any distance that Savvy creates. This nice back air. Ooh, With the down, down smash, smash and like, it does. Catching if I was GCAP, roll in. If I was GCAP, I definitely want to be very. Oh, that's another stock right there. I fumbled hard. I lost all three stocks and I just, I didn't take any. It was bad. And then my team rallied and we beat them and the whole room exploded. It was, it was, it was fantastic. Everyone was jumping all over the place. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a great time. Let me imagine the energy. That's really awesome. So my last question for you is, do you have any goals for the rest of this school year that you want to accomplish? Well, for Overwatch, I do want to rank up again. I want to get GM. And for Smash Ultimate, I want to get a higher rank. I, I think, so in East Isle, I'm ranked, four, I think, fourth or third. But I want to be first. I want to be at top of the ranking. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't like being under two other people. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can do it.
Is there anything that you would like to add about your team or you before we go? Anything you want the world to know about you? Um, join our team. We're great people. I don't know. <laughs> good. <laughs> That's good. Well, thank you again so much for your time and doing this interview with me and fitting me in your schedule of all the stuff you have going on. I really appreciate it. No problem. No problem. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Hey guys, KTAD here. Now, I've been told I need to step in to create like a buffer zone between some of the other hosts so that uh, the Valorant v Overwatch conflict may finally come to an end. But uh, between, uh, between you and me guys, I don't think they both realize that League's kind of already won that war. So, uh, so don't tell them. Don't tell them anything. But anyways, you guys already know why we're here. And if not, well, then you're in luck because... We've got some of the best collegiate esports moments right here. Don't believe me? Well, that's okay, but uh, you know, here's your proof. Let's get into it. To start us off, we have the combo of Matt and Festive as they execute a brilliant mid-air handoff to close out game two and tie up the series. Ended here in regulation. Can Festive and Matt do it? Matt's there, puts it in, and we do get the go-ahead goal. Is it going to be enough to end it here in reg? 25 seconds left right here. About two minutes since our last goal. Fifth total in this one. Is this looking like a yeah, moderate? Feeling thirsty? Well, if you are, then crollo has got what you need with these sick plays on Pac-Man. That's not always guaranteed to stock. Goes for the side special into that. That would have been an insane way to end it. Now looking for oh! the fire like an edge guard. Slam dunk right there. Is they're able to finish them off? At number six, see if you can count the ultimates here. Because when the dust settles, there can be only one survivor. College, but I don't know what Kid University are thinking. Well, okay, they're thinking it. What is going on in this fight? My days. Two to the bomb, three to the tire, one to the self destruct. And. It's we just get a the lone team. Diva. It's a, it's a lone what diva. What is happening? <laughs> no, okay. Hip is back here. You know what number play this is, right? Because J Rod knows. And let me tell you, he's definitely keeping count. But it's going to be J Rod who strikes first again with a nice headshot onto Boss. Gonna start oh moving God. down into garage, and J-Rod has just approached now through garage. Fire ball has been committed. Oh Lance oh. tries to take a peek, but J-Rod's there. Finds Pigeon Mac. We're looking at potentially an ace. Austin gonna do their- Trying to scrape together some sort of consolation prize. He's blinded, and they're- Oh my God, draw. What a teammate. He's giving a- Oh no, J-Rod around the corner looking for the ace. One shot on Austin, he finds the oh. ace. Good guy, Beautiful. draw. Gives it over. Love the- A man down, the overtime clock counting, and the ball on their half of the pitch. Yet somehow, Stonehill manages to make it work in this crazy match against Buena Vista. Out and pushed right back out again. This is a game of inches. Who can aggress first? And that's gonna be it. Joker from the long shot along the field. Look at this from the back of board. Straight to Joker's deep. The touch is so delicate. In what was surely a game-changing play here, Nichols State's Law pulls out a tire that can only be described as illegal to put the nail in the coffin against Missouri Western. Ready on the bread side. Yeah, Nichols has enough time to come through. No! It's three! No! It's not one. It's not two. It's not three. It is three eliminations with Law's rip tire there. Absolutely incredible. Able to pick up a fourth. Too shy for the team kill right now. At number two, it's just a masterful display of edge guarding from Adelphi's Davian. Check it out. That roller is going to be a great opportunity to get in and pass, possibly even just through those arms. Goes for the down throw into forward, or forward air, excuse me. A great combo. Could have found some great damage offside. And as that paint just racks up onto this midman, that is more and more damage basically for free. Davion, it's edge for guard. A bottom stage. My goodness, what a stall. Beautiful edge guard. And England. 
And in our top play of this week, have you seen the movie Ratatouille? It has nothing to do with this play, but I think you'll see why we bring it up. Dude, look at this rat, though. Look at this rat going up long, dude. Oh, oh he's got another. I mean, it's Ratatouille. They're chefing it up. I'm gonna go find another. <laughs> Fozzy, quick trade, though. I'm gonna stall the push for now, but contain just a little bit here. We got a lot more work to be done. It's out of CT already. Right click is missed. Ooh. Yeah, right click is huge going in this round. It's not gonna find anything but tumble and wheel. Fozzie with a quick trade. Oh, okay. stop. Okay, stop let the it. rat do it all. Oh, my. Phew. What a week and what a crazy set of matches we've been seeing so far. Now, with that said, we're just now passing the halfway point in the season. So that playoffs picture is definitely starting to shape up. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date with all of the ECAC action, then definitely give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. Or if you guys want to catch all of the matches live, you can find us on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at 7 now, as always, a special shout out to our partners over at Esports U for expanding on our broadcast coverage. We definitely want to give them a special thank you for that. But, you know, that's it. That's the show. That's all we've got this week. Come back next week. Hopefully we've got a new host. Hopefully they've stopped bickering and all of that. But in any case, I've been KTAD. It's been a blast. And I'll see you guys next time. I really think that there's been a sorely missed opportunity for developers to take a step back from competition and take a step forward with community. Mm. Um, and if, if they do that, I think we all win because community, I would argue is the one thing that no one's trying to solve. Mm -hmm. We're trying to solve recruitment. We're trying to solve competition. Tell me where's community. Mm -hmm. Honestly, any one of you, go ahead. Shout out what's the national community for Scholastic right now. Any title, tell me. Yeah. Where do I go? How do I meet and hang out? Of the storm. How does you community yeah. zero? There's yeah. nothing. It, it yeah. doesn't exist anymore. And it doesn't exist statewide. It doesn't exist school wide. It doesn't exist region wide. It doesn't exist nationally. It doesn't exist digitally on Twitch. It doesn't exist digitally on Discord. It doesn't exist through any form of skill based development. It doesn't exist on any form of, you know, uh, skill-based learning or just pure socialization and fandom. Mm -hmm. Huge missed opportunity. You want to take their time and make it more efficient, in my opinion, uh, tell Riot Scholastic politely to stop what they're doing with competitive and their integration with LCS should be, you know, uh, Twitch, you know, symposiums and summits and conversations and learning and, uh, all sorts of wonderful things and promoting camps and educational learning activities and RSSA sponsored curriculum that will move the needle. I don't see any of that. So Chris, that was, that was pretty much the last topic. You, you kind of wrapped it in a nice package called community. And I was kind of thinking more from an organizer and a broadcaster point of view around growing fandom. And how do we get fandom around collegiate esports to look more like traditional sports across the board? And, um, you know, that helps us go out and sell sponsorships in the place of which trickles down to all our member schools that we represent. But when we go to brands and we can't check that box of, you know, a billion impressions and a million views, um, we still are challenged with selling those sponsorships. So my last and final is, do we have any secrets around how to grow fandom or grow community on, let's just start with on campus. I mean, I got the big one real quick. Okay. Best way to grow community food nights has nothing to do with playing the game. I'll give you a real life example. We used to do dollar burger night at the University of Cincinnati. We would just go out to Bar Louie. We used to have bar, dollar burgers every Wednesday. We'd post in, in that this time of those Facebook groups, 
tell people where to show up. Six people, 12 people showed up the first week. By the third month, we had 40 plus people coming. And it was the biggest revenue night of the week for Bar Louie every week, purely because of us. But we had friendships, we had relationships, we had roommates, we had all sorts of great, wonderful things come from that. And that translated to our lands, our club meetings and everything from that. Mm -hmm. It was uh, nothing beats food nights. Um, Just like pro sports, we need to focus on tribalism. And the way that you create tribalism is you have to prioritize in-person experience, in my opinion. Um, I think that there's a lot of companies trying to become unicorn online platforms, but at the end of the day, I think we need, uh, pockets and hubs around the country that serve as, as regional and local hubs. Um, Mm -hmm. once you, once you get a group of people together that share their love for the team that is on their campus, they start to develop a bond around that. Um, you can do that online but it won't be nearly as effective Mm -hmm. um professional esports is is having this tribalism problem because it's the majority of it's online it was it's resulted in um fans following players more so than than the teams i mean that that's a pretty broad topic though like we're starting to Mm -hmm. see those trends in traditional sports as well begin start to occur um people will follow lebron and and specific players on different teams to wherever they are. Um, but I think, I think for collegiate specifically, um, schools need to create meaningful live experiences. And if we're talking explicitly about fandom, you have to. Welcome back to eSports U, everybody. We are here with another Super Smash Brothers match. My name is Keela Miles on the mic with Opossumus, and we're getting ready to go into Albi- uh <laughs> Sorry, uh, Marist College taking on. Well, what college are you representing, Opossumus? <laughs> we are representing Albion College in Albion, Michigan. Nice, and really? this is a pretty interesting case. We, I'm excited to actually have a caster with me from the school who's playing. Um, I'm quite familiar with Marist myself, so as we were saying before, we can combine our knowledge and get full coverage for every single player. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's going to be very interesting. We, we have a lot of, we have a lot of diverse picks over here. I'm very excited to see what we're, we can do with that. Yeah. Do you have anyone you want to shout out in particular? Uh, if you, yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we have a player named Ezra who plays a excellent Samus. Very quick, very Ooh. fast, very accurate. Nice. Beautiful. Very accurate indeed. Uh, meanwhile, over on the side of Marist, I'm actually curious because uh, my roster knowledge is from last year. I do see they have Stinky Cheese 782 who has been the calm uh, player this entire time. But, uh, well, we're getting into it now. Uh, immediately it is going. Yeah, I think this is Seth, Seth Cartier against the Blue My Dion, who is a new player from Marist. Ooh. Oh, that is a brutal shield break to open things up into the forward smash. Seth not pulling any punches off the bat as Blue My Dian on the corn is trying to stabilize. Ooh. He's just swiping at him. And he is. Battle of the Nairs, both a lot of range on them. I feel like Sephiroth's has a bit more in terms of... Uh, burst potential but the setups off the corns there cannot be deterred as ooh, hits the pin ooh. as sephiroth even wing a very light character one more strong hit right here could be it yep oh it's going for going for cleanup yeah ooh, i like that a little bit of water to put out the giga flare and now we can see some very nice spacing from blue my dion on that mm. back air that back air spaces itself it moves you through space and that's exactly what blue my dion is using to keep the edge over Seth. yeah i can definitely see that oh overall i'm I'm liking this so far. Both these players, not the most precise in their spacing, but that doesn't matter as much because that lets them get a little more aggressive, put each other in uncomfortable positions, just like that. Like, you don't want to be above a step <laughs> It's It's definitely the range game with this match. 
Because while they are both melee, they both do have a lot of incredible, like, incredible range potential. Especially mm -hmm. Seth. Yeah, a lot of burst options with that up B, uh, jumping in with that Ooh, flare as well at times. Ooh, oh, oh they flew there too it low. is. I think Seth thought they had a jump. I do not believe they did. <laughs> I think they lost wing after that. After mm -hmm. that second hit. Yeah, they're going to get it early this stock, but perfect oh. timing right there from Lumai Dion to hit in between the hit of the counter. And right now, Lumai Dion is pushing their advantage hard. Yeah, definitely a lot more aggressive than it was the first two stocks. Yes, it is. Both these players getting a very good feel for each other. Ooh, Dude. Down. Oh, this is going to be a lot of pokes really quickly here. <gasps> Very big fan of that down smash, and I don't blame them, but grabbing right through the super armor, Bumai Dion retakes the stage for the time being, oh. and finally, the back air started the first stock, and it ends the last stock. That'll be Seth, uh, that'll be Bumai Dion finishing off with Maris with two stocks remaining. That was just excellent playing. I don't I don't even know how to, how to react to that. That was just a lot. Yeah. Um, overall... I really liked how Blue My Dion pulled themselves together towards the end. I feel like initially they were a little put off by how aggressive we saw Seth being. I mean, Seth was going right in there, got the shield break, and that's a mental boom if I've ever seen one. You know how it feels to get your shield broken, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's scary. That was just, that was a lot to take in. That was very quick. Like, that was very quick. I didn't even, mm -hmm. so much yeah. happened there. There was just, there's a lot of poking, a lot of, incredibly placed shields it was just, just mm -hmm. wow yeah I, i'm excited to see how this goes this is judging from that first match that's just this is going to be very exciting to watch yeah, it is this back and forth swing, and I'm glad you bring up the shields because it was a very interesting game of back and forth with the shield play because well both of those characters have some pretty potent shield break setups. So yes. it's always a gamble on whether or not you're going to want to try and shield the attacks or just counterattack, try and stuff them out, as we are going to be seeing a Samus come out. This might be Ezra, who you talked about before. I think it is. He's got the master hand icon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, excited to see. Excited to see. And on a big stage like this, I know Ezra is going to be right at home. Now Blue my Dion. Ooh. Gonna be trying to get in, catch uh, uh, Ezra in their jumps, but like you said, very aggressive, Sam is very precise, and they're demonstrating that with the immediate aggression against Blue My Dion. Uh, so something about I played against him myself. He's his minds are possibly some of the gr some of the greatest mind setups I think I've seen. It's it's. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a painful fight, whether you win or lose. Yeah, the mines can open up, open you up for so much damage. Um, and the use of the tether recovery right there gives you quick stage control once again. And we're looking to see those mines at ledge. That's where it's going to be very difficult for uh, uh, Ezra to do a lot about it. As this might actually be Watcher, not beating Blue My Dion, but either way. We can Ooh. just say Maris. <laughs> Staying aggressive. This is this is definitely going to be uh it's definitely gonna be a very interesting one. Cause if, if the last match sets any precedent, it's Ooh. Justian is a very, very aggressive player. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Not afraid to push their advantage when they see an opportunity, when they see Ezra a little too close to the edge of the stage. As that landing there, that double hit, Ezra wasn't ready for it. They're looking at the dash attack that'll get off me tool to, well, oh. get them off of them. But yeah, charge shot from across the stage. You can see Watcher a little bit scary. It the is Blue on um, Oh, this is Watcher on Samus. Perhaps. Reduce the mines there. Double mine was definitely a surprise. The double oh. mine is actually a really good recovery tool. It lets you pop yourself up from the explosion of the mine, and that's what gives Sam such good air control overall. You never really oh, expect go. it from someone who's like, like, like a character that's like you. You genuinely would see more as a horizontal character. It's kind mm -hmm. of 
Ooh, speaking of horizontal, oh. that recovery is certainly better when the horizontal than the vertical, as we can <laughs> see. Uh, Blue by the on, not quite able to make it back to stage, and that is going to be an uh, unceremonious end to that one. <laughs> yeah, just as fast as the first. Wow. Like, this is, this is definitely gameplay on a faster level than I'm used to seeing it. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's that's definitely going to make it more interesting to watch. That was yeah. that was excellent play. It certainly was. I I was a little worried for Watcher slash Ezra uh, when when it opened up and we saw them get caught at the ledge. Even though they had some very clean gameplay up to that point, an early stock it it mentally booms you. <laughs> you get you get this feeling in your head like that shouldn't have happened to me i shouldn't have let that happen and if you let that stick with you it can get pretty bad however that didn't seem to be the case for ezra they pulled themselves right back into it you called out the mines continuously the mines are really good because they cover a lot of options at ledge well, they're used mm -hmm. like actual mines you set them down as a trap at ledge and that covers one option altogether then you oh, with totally. your body and your moves can cover in another option so if they can jump or you can cover them jumping while your minds cover them getting onto the ground, you know? Yeah, it, it definitely it definitely gives you a lot of almost like defensive options as well. Because if they get too close, you still have time to use another move while that mine is falling. So no matter mm -hmm. what, you still have that little bit of extra. Like, they, they may be able to hit you through it, but you still have enough of a potential for another hit. It always opens them up for combos. You could pop them up and then hit them with the fire thing. It's just a lot. A lot you could do. Yeah, there is. I'm, I'm curious. It does look like it's going to be Stinky Cheese coming in next. The perennial Jigglypuff player from Marist. Now, Samus Jigglypuff, not infamously a very good matchup. However, uh, Stinky Cheese is good at finding the chasing down kills off stage. That's the thing. Ooh. With Samus, you need to follow them off stage. Because as I mentioned before, you, you saw that double bomb off stage, right? That little pop up they got from it. It's a recovery tool. It lets them linger off stage for a lot longer than you would ever think a big armored character should. And when they're doing that, you need a balloon Pokemon to go out there and swap them back into the blast zone where they belong. That's what Stinky Cheese's win condition is right there. Oh, that is definitely a... That's definitely one hell of a win, win condition, I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... It's difficult, don't get me wrong. But... Stinky Cheese at this point has been playing for quite a while. Uh, I first saw them a couple seasons ago in a different league, and now, I mean, they're communicating for their team. Um, I'll have to check in on them if they might be the captain of Marist now. Um, either way, though, uh, I'm excited to see what they bring to the table. They've always been improving, always been grinding. I remember last year when I talked to the Marist captain, they would always say, like, Stinky Cheese is the one you've got to watch out for, like the sleeper pick for, like, most dangerous player. If they're coming in now, well, oh, better warn your that's teammate. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, really, shout really, out uh... real quick to... Oh, go ahead. No, no, you, you go. Uh, shout outs to the uh, Joe Soyson tag. <laughs> uh, Joe Soyson is a long, long time caster uh, from the OG League where I met Marist. Uh, crowd favorite. And also, you all just missed it, was just on the other stream. Like, it's not like Soy is retired, like... He was here like an hour ago. So, um, <laughs> either way, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's glad to see himself represented here on the battlefield. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so far, you hyped up Ezra as being a very precise player. That was a really good word for it, precise, is how they move, how they place their attacks. But now they've got a much more elusive target in the form of Stinky Cheese's Jigglypuff. We'll see uh, yes. how this pans out going in. It's it's, it's mostly just going to be movement against planning is definitely going to be what's, what's most important about this match. Because mm -hmm. the second... Yeah. Second, there's like a miscalculation as the second this one ends. Yeah, as Ooh, the immediate aggression buff. right there, going for a lot of down airs at low percents. One of Jigglypuff's best combo tools, forward throw to put him off stage. Edge guard situation. This is what I talked about. Jigglypuff oh, has oh, to go oh, out there oh. and swat them away, but Ezra is able to recover. Use the gadgets. Oh, another one. Can they make oh, it back? I no. I don't think they're recovering from that one. 
That's the dangerous thing I was telling you about, Opossumus. But immediate low percent combo, 57% already. And Stinky Cheese overextends. Watcher is finding ways to strike back for now. Oh, there it is. Oh, Ooh. oh he's like going to try to ledge guard with the nines. Yeah. And that oh, there it opened is. up by Watcher crossed up with the back air and now gets caught by a back air of their own. Watcher is doing a much better job at keeping Sticky Cheese off of them. If you'll notice, has not gone off stage once in that... I, I stand corrected. He has not been hit <laughs> off stage once um, since that wow. initial interaction. <laughs> Still, using the mines as a defensive tactic, it's it's definitely paying off. Even if they're getting, like, only low percentage hits, it's still still managing to work. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh. Yeah, it's getting a little a dicey. One. Oh, there's a hit off stage. Oh, but immediate recovery. Ezra is so good at snapping right to that ledge. Never letting Stinky Cheese get that edge guard that they want, but going very low. They get caught Dude. by one thing right here. Ooh, that was dangerous. Oh, missed the tether. Definitely shouldn't have oh. risked that. And that's going to be a charge shot. Cleaning up the stock and an opportunity right here. But Stinky Cheese goes way too low. Not going to catch that one. Oh, oh, well, there goes the tether catch again. Oh, he missed the mine on it. Oh, 129%. That's not looking too good. I'll be out of shield. That's a really good get off me tool that Ezra has. At any point, they can go into that screw attack from inside their shield, and there's not really a lot that Stinky, Stinky Cheese can do except take that damage. Oh, unless they bait. shield it. <laughs> oh, there's the catch. Ooh. Oh! A little pop up. Ezra goes for the screw attack again. Oh, the mine protect. Ezra has definitely cleaned up their gameplay since that first stock, but one mistake will be there. And they missed there the tether, is. and that's the one mistake. <laughs> oh, almost made it too. Had it. They had it like almost, almost perfectly lined up, but just it's close. That just little, little infraction. They were a little too high over the edge. Um, I don't know exactly how Samus's tether works, but sometimes if there's someone in front of you, the tether can prioritize hitting them instead of snapping the yeah. ledge. Either way, Stinky Cheese was there to intercept. It doesn't matter what the actual mistake was. Stinky Cheese was there ready for a mistake should it happen. And as soon as it was, they were there to capitalize. Two stocks off the board. Maris currently holding the lead by two stocks. Alrighty. Yeah. That was just... And that was a rough one. It was. That, that, that recovery there was just That first stock. Uh, just just the slightest bit of a slightest bit of a correction would have gotten off with it. Not a single not a single extra point. Mm -hmm. But there we that go. That first stock was a little bit painful. I mean, as a former Jigglypuff player, I have to celebrate a little bit, but objectively I can see that being killed at almost zero percent simply for being touched off stage when you weren't expecting to. It can't feel good. And the fact that Ezra was oh. able to keep themselves in that that entire time was very admirable. Oh, I completely agree. Just being able to fend that off long enough to at least take a stock or two. That's mm -hmm. that's definitely worth something. And going into that, uh, going into that second part of the game, you could see why I said that this matchup isn't amazing for Jigglypuff because you saw how hard Stinky Cheese had to work to get in, and how Ezra was just continuously boxing them out with projectiles and rockets and charge shots. Oh my! Like it was just continuous pressure that Stinky Cheese did find ways around in the end, but it was never easy. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely, you could definitely see it was a bit of a struggle for both. Jigglypuff definitely did just absolutely crush the first stock. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. There was what? No, mm -hmm. How how many? What percentage were, were they at? It was at like twenty. That that's Jigglypuff's strength, uh, though. As ooh, true. they're now against. This is a matchup that a lot of people sleepers say oh. that Jigglypuff wins. This is going to be Cyclone on the Wii Fit Trainer. Wii Fit Trainer loves to be at ledge. Jigglypuff loves to have you at ledge. It's all a battle of whether or not, uh, well, whether or not they touch the controller. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Stinky Jesus. That's even the stocks. Stock. Yep. And now are we good? Yeah, now we're good. Now we're good. Okay. Right. Now, I have right seen this Wii Fit Trainer player before that, again, a 
very precise player. Use, the use of the soccer ball is quite impressive. Well, you can see good I, movement by Stinky Cheese so far, but the Nair. Oh! oh. Huh? I'm excited to see this one. Yeah, right now. Excellent kick. Stinky Cheese is struggling to get hit in, but one touch is all they need. Respects the soccer ball, does not go in. Stinky Cheese holding the line for now, but Cyclone, we fit kills off the top. So the last place that you want to see Stinky Cheese is above Cyclone, and that's where they've been for almost the entire match. Trying to get the safe heals. Oh. And that little, that little glow you see around Cyclone, that is deep breathing. That means they have a massive damage boost right now. Doesn't get caught by the jab lock. Stinky Cheese covers that. Is that a kill? Oh no, they had their jump, but oh. I don't know if they have the resources to get back. The header delays oh, the and is able to knock it away. Is. Perfect awareness by Cyclone off stage right there. Not an easy thing to recover. <laughs> oh, misses the soccer ball. It's a little scary, this but Ezra holds tense. On. He goes in, but, oh! oh, just a little bit underneath and right into the spike. Cyclone showing their aggression off stage. Ooh, as, that was, oh. That's definitely a hard spike to recover from. And so is that one. <laughs> off the side of the I'm, stage. And yeah. That means Fabian only has one, one left, but uh, only has two stocks left. However, Ooh. this is looking doable. Dude. Stinky Cheese. Oh my gosh, Stinky Cheese is on fire covering these tech options. Forces the tech against the stage right there. Very good finish stuck oh. here. No. Not once has Stinky Cheese been able to pin Cyclone at ledge, and that's where I thought Stinky Cheese would be getting a lot of their wins from. That's true. Hon honestly, I'm I'm almost surprised that Cyclone's managed to, to stay on point as quick, like as well and effectively as they have yeah it's it's, almost, is... it's i think it's mm -hmm. just the fact that the recovery is almost different it's just mm -hmm. different enough it's, it's the delays option. with the soccer ball the fact that the soccer ball delays them in the air gives them more time to recover and lets them hit back at stinky cheese as well that's a two uh double-sided sword that cyclone is making great use of True, 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 true. I, I have been noticing that. Oh! Oh, here, here it comes. It's gonna decide. Some off the edge. They're trying to recover, but the Nair does catch them. Ah, oh, just as they got deep breathing on line two, and now Cyclone struggling to get back into this. I mean, one hit will kill, but getting that one hit against Jigglypuff is not very easy. This character kills very early. This could be a stock right here if you make one right. mistake. Ooh. Oh. Early jump. Oh! That was a rest oh. right there and Sticky Cheese didn't pull the trigger. I do like that though. Consistent damage. Deep breathing online again. One move will kill. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Alright, we're going into next match with one stock. Yep, oh. Albion hurting a little bit there. Stinky Cheese put in work and then some. Uh, the fact that they were able to get another stock off of Albion at the end, very end there, that was very impressive. However, I keep saying this, Cyclone made them work for it. Cyclone repeatedly just made sure that they never, ever felt safe trying to edge guard them. And Stinky <laughs> Cheese had... True. Yeah. Like, I would have been terrified trying to trying to edge guard Cyclone when Cyclone had shown that they were able to get kills from you trying to edge guard damage, uh, stage advantage. Cyclone was just continuously winning out whenever Jigglypuff went off stage, which is not usually how you see this matchup go. So good on them for that for stabilizing. But in the end, Stinky Cheese's ability to secure low percent kills was the downfall. Is Rog Rat is going to oh, be totally. coming in next. I'm excited to see it with a name like that. They they got to be back in something. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Rograt, uh is a Greninja player coming in. Uh, one of two, though I okay. don't know if Relax is still on the team. Greninja, a very hit-and-run style of character. Uh, 
has the speed and vertic- uh, very high jump height. Uh, I mean, it's a frog. He jumps high. Makes sense. <laughs> that makes but, uh, complete and total sense. Of course. And the the ability that that jump gives them is to choose when and where they fight. Because if they don't want to take an engagement, they jump up 30 feet in the air. And what are you going to do? Chase them up there? That's exactly <laughs> what Rogwright would want. Like, you just have to yeah. wait for them to come in and then counter. <laughs> it's just, it's it sounds much more like it's going to be, it's definitely going to be a mind game more than anything, this Nets match. Because it all, it is, we're already, uh, we're already two stocks down. So one stock versus just a brand new that's already going to be playing a lot of mind games. That's that's definitely going to be very tense. But I do kind of want to see how this is going to play out. I'm uh, very, very excited for this. Yeah, I am too. And on Kalos, it's going to be pretty difficult to stay by the ledge. The fact that that platform's there, I don't know if that benefits or hurts Cyclone. The fact that that side platform is there giving them more protection, but also giving Rograt more options at the ledge, I think overall this is a Greninja win, but Cyclone has options right here. Refit is a character that can heal, a character that can kill at zero if they get the right string. There is potential right here, but Rograt is aggressive. Oh. Already at 30. Ooh. Already? I, I'm liking how Ezra is keeping Rograt in the air, and more importantly, keeping them away from them, I mean. But, then again, Rograt can use their amazing ground speed to run right on in and get a massive, massive opening. 61%. True. This may shock you, but that is close to kill percent for Greninja if he gets the correct setup at the correct uh, position on the stage. However, one uh, anti-air, one up air, one up B, one up smash from Cyclone will end Rograt's stock right now. Totally. It's, uh, the cap's at 100 for, for, uh, for WeFit Trainer, correct? Um, not quite. Uh, the deep don't, breathing... Don't they kill up 98? Ooh, oh. not quite, not quite. No, uh, you can live past 100%, as you can see right there, but not for long, because even though the percent did go above, uh, they still ended up falling, because the higher percent is, the farther you get knocked back by moves, and that oh. uh, kunai you saw right at the end there, that blue sword, is an incredibly powerful move. And at over, at like 98%, getting caught by a powerful move at the ledge is almost guaranteed death, unless you have some crazy oh. options, which... We fit trainer unfortunately does not, and that means Marist College is up 1-0 in this set of crew battles. Ooh. That's a rough one. Well, and yeah. I'm just gonna see if the players are taking a break. I think they're probably just going in right into the next game just because um they they do both of these teams I think do have another game to play after this, uh unrelated to stream. Um so, I don't think we're going to be taking a break in between these matches, but we have the bands coming out, and yeah. Um, so, overall, I was pretty impressed by Albion. A lot of what they brought out was very good, but it was countered by what happened to be out on the field at the time. Now that Albion has more knowledge of who is on the Maris roster, I'm hoping they can uh, be a little more selective with their counter picks. Like, I, I feel like the Wii Fit was kind of the answer to the Jigglypuff. Um, I think the Wii Fit kind of... Even though I think Samus on paper has a better matchup, um, I, I think Cyclone demonstrated that they were able to make them more afraid a lot more easily. Oh no, I agree 100%. It makes it makes total sense that it makes almost complete sense that now that we have now that Albion has more knowledge of exactly what like or at least a more a closer idea as to what they're planning to put on the field, it it will definitely make picking picking who they want having whatever teammate they decide to place in will definitely hmm. be much more suited which that's that's i no matter, do no not matter know what that advantage is. that is it's still a decent advantage now this is going to be a strange matchup right here because 
uh, Cyclone, perhaps? We'll see who this uh, Luigi is. Either way, if they get in against Blue My Dion, they are going to get a lot of damage. However, Blue My Dion, with their sword, with their range, has the tools to keep Luigi's stubby little hands out. True. Luigi does have a lot of options, though. He does. They're very fast options, but they don't have a lot of range. They're limited to his, well, the reach of his arms. Meanwhile, Corrin does have that sword, but then, as you can see, as soon as Luigi does get in, he can put on a lot of pressure very fast. Mm -hmm. He definitely has... I, I believe Luigi himself actually has a lot more... Not, not quite offensive options, Ooh. but definitely has... Just well, options in general. Definitely Decent has mid -range. that range. <laughs> you see that little short Yukin right there? That's the up yeah. B. It has a sweet spot that kills ridiculously early. But it's so tiny that it is balanced. <laughs> huh. So, like, was it shrunk recently? Like, make it uh, harder? No, no, no. It's it's always been small. But you, you pretty much need to be right on top of your opponent in order to hit it. And that is a very scary situation, especially because if you miss it, you're in for a lot of damage because it leaves you in a lot of lag at the end of it. Ooh, um, that's that's always bad. It's always yeah. a losing play. But right now, the winning play is Cyclone keeping up the pressure on Blue yeah. Dion at the ledge. Um, this is uh this is definitely more aggressive than that Sephiroth match from from our from our intro. That was. This definitely has a lot of potential to be possibly the most aggressive match I've seen tonight. Yeah, the fact that Cyclone has to get aggressive with Fastum. Sephiroth can play the spacing game, can play the range game. However, Luigi has to get in. And so Cyclone has to find oh. ways to approach, has to find ways to take these stocks. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. But this gets is caught the spike. The can they get the interrupt right there? No. Medion misses the option. Oh. We do Cyclone. That wind oh. box, that, that tornado right there from Cyclone literally sucks the opponent in and kills them. But the side B does get a stock off of Cyclone. Oh. Well, that's good to know. Oh. Yeah. Forward tilt into up tilt. Some decent damage right now. And again, Playing this rain back air sends Cyclone off stage goes very low. Does that little clip work? Still has, still oh, have no. decent recovery. The, they live Whoa. that. What? Either oh. way, gets caught by the Ford Smash right there, charging up the buzzsaw and then letting it rip. It's an even game right now, Apostles. But here comes the down throw. Down yep. three. Here it drops is. Drops the combo. Oh, he lost it. Ah, uh, Luigi. Yeah. Ooh, oh! There's that up B, but it's too low for percent to kill. Only at 40%. All, all it needs to do is... Cyclone needs to hit it one more time, probably. Oh, for sure. Oh, oh! The witch! Did I hit the platform? The Luigi Clearly. dome. That might be it. Oh, no. Cyclone. That move is too stale. Uh, but right now... Oh, this is terrifying! Cyclone is throwing out so many kill moves right now, but it put them in a very Up uncomfortable B. situation. Up B should do it. It would do it. Ford Smash would do it. Back air would do it. Anything. And most importantly, that Luigi Cyclone, which is very hard to avoid, would also kill. Oh. Wonder, making it really difficult Wonder. for them to get off ledge. They run away. Paralyzer, but they can't get a follow-up. Oh, they can't break that shield. Oh! Oh, there it is. Hit of the noggin out of shield that up smash quite fast, especially when you hit the back of Luigi's shield. Because as you saw, Luigi literally, in order to hit you, like throws his head back like this. And so when you're behind his shield, it hits you a lot faster than if you're in front of it. So because yeah, it's the it's the hitbox. His head's included in the hitbox, correct? Yep. For that one. Yeah, it's literally a like a like big old headbutt and it still has a hitbox at the very beginning of the headbutt and so they're able to get that kill thanks to that and good on them very good performance right there from cyclone uh it was a little indeed, scary indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed. once blue by dion started to uh figure out how to gimp them a little bit more um it uh 
got a little bit more terrifying to be anywhere near the ledge if you were Cyclone. <laughs> oh, almost, yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was a very intense, very, ex like, almost extremely aggressive match. Like, almost all of these matches have been just the people are right on top of each other. And if they're not, their spacing is perfect for them to just continually attack and continually throw themselves at the other person. Like, it's just... That one was definitely a lot, just a lot to take in. There was so much happening all at once, so fast. Like yeah. Luigi's, Luigi's melee prowess is just... Uh, it's scary. Just, yeah, yeah, it really <laughs> I mean, is. And you don't expect it. You don't expect it from Luigi, you know? I feel like, well, that's, I feel like that's the part that makes it makes it entertaining luigi both the mario brothers are very very fast however it's more jigglypuff uh or sorry the fact that luigi is able to throw out so many aerials in quick succession i mean you heard the sound effects the sound effects are the uh, biggest indicator of just yep. how fast luigi moves he's out there like wah, 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 and like Every single time you hear that, that is a threat. That is a potential combo <laughs> if any one of those moves connects. You know? <laughs> that is a little terrifying. Just just yeah. imagine hearing like a just imagine hearing a small a small man just, just running at you, just making noises. That it's, mm -hmm. it's terrifying. And it's even more mm -hmm. terrifying when you can see it in third person, see him actively chasing the other person. Uh huh. Just makes it hundred times more threatening it certainly okay. does i i feel like jigglypuff could be a good pick here stinky cheese wants to come in however it's terrifying to go in against a one stock luigi so you saw that down throw and i got very yes. scared yes. uh that's because that's a zero to death uh if you get that uh, combo starter if you get that down throw at zero there is a true combo that can lead directly into a stock loss now cyclone oh. messed it up a little bit <laughs> cyclone messed it up a tiny bit um and that left them open for a punish however i expect that uh if at first you don't succeed try try again they are going to hit that the second time so going in oh, against great. a stock one luigi even though they only have one life it is not, you can't breathe easy at all. Because if you get hit once, if you get grabbed once, you could very easily see your stock vanishing. Yeah, you could. I, I think you're almost definitely right on that. I, I did see there was some semblance of a combo showing that I, I it definitely looked like it had a lot of damage planned. Oh, yeah. They, they still little, got the little minor mistakes. They still got to 50%, which is the crazy thing yes, you have to realize. Um, even with a significantly reduced damage, they still got to 50%. Um, oh, yeah. And 50%, as you saw, almost killed thanks to the up B. So we are going to see Stinky Cheese coming on in. And we'll see what they're able to make of this coming in on to Final Destination. No platforms interrupt. All right. Here we go. All right, Ooh. stocks evening. <laughs> the Luigi plank. Yep. Yeah, you have to taunt at the beginning of a crew battle just to make things fair for everybody. But uh, okay. now, now we see them coming out. Oh. Uh, you see, again, the pace at which Luigi can oh throw out moves, Jigglypuff doesn't have a lot of good times to approach. Luckily, Jigglypuff... Oh, yeah, there's an opportunity right here for throw. No! Stinky Cheese doesn't go for it. Oh. Oh. You're okay. right. I can. Now that I'm particularly listening for it, I can hear the whack. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. <just. laughs> Constantly. Oh. Constantly. Ezra. Oh, the green fireball. Yeah, is Ezra is doing a great job at keeping Stinky Cheese out, and this is what I was talking about. Jigglypuff can have a lot of trouble getting in against such a uh, airily adept character like that. Nair will True. continue the ledge trapping, goes for it again, but this time, Sinky Cheese just, or uh, Cyclone just rolls right off. Dash tag right there, oh. this could be it. Needs a misfire yeah, or something. This, uh... Still had a jump? Oh my. 
Yes. Cyclone is really good at preserving their resources off stage. Tech Chase right here. Oh, this is it. And that's going to be a stop. There it is. Two to one. This is mm -hmm. definitely going to be a tough. Oh. This might. I, uh. Oh. Ooh. It's the landing. Puff comes down. Is. And. Ooh. Now, the ring that out. is. That is a stock lead, however, that was a stock off the board right there for the side of uh, Albion, which means Albion is in the lead right here in the second crew battle. Indeed. <sighs> Jigglypuff and... is so menacing. Yeah, they've got to be ready for that puff uh, like they were previously. Um because you saw that puff run through the stocks last time. Uh, <laughs> there really wasn't a lot of counterplay in the initial stages of that. However, once once they got... Uh, like, every single person started to adapt to Jigglypuff last year. Or last... Not last year. What am I talking about? Last game. Uh, we mm. saw... Uh, who was it? Ezra on the Samus begin to realize how to zone this puff out we saw a uh, very big adaptations from cyclone as they recovered to avoid getting hit by jigglypuff if they're able to keep that energy up i have a good feeling going into this for albion i agree honestly it seems that it seems that we're that but albion is definitely recuperating from this last match it was it was definitely it's definitely been going at a lot quicker of a pace than I think we were initially expecting. Yep. But mm -hmm. now, More now than I that, certainly was. <laughs> oh yeah. These are, these are going by way faster than I was expecting. Uh, the fact that, uh, well, <laughs> Jiggly of Luigi actually lasted a lot longer than I expected. The fact that it took so long to finally get that last hit, uh, which I feel like was a testament to how, um, how again, Cyclone managed to preserve their resources continuously. They never really ran out of jumps. They never really ran out of side Bs. They always found their way back to ledge. And yeah. So now we have Chris Uchiha coming in. I have no idea who that is. Do you have any idea who that is? <laughs> I think I do. Uh, I believe I believe they play Sonic. Uh, that's, yeah, okay. That's going to be that's, interesting. That is pretty difficult to contend with. Jiggly, Sonic has almost complete control over the ground game, and more than that... Yes, he does. Uh, can burst into the air with spin dash and homing attack. Now, Jigglypuff has some options. A, linger, a big lingering hitbox is what you need to counter Sonic, and Jigglypuff does have that in that pound. That's when she, like, throws her arm forward like that, and there's, like, a big white karate chop... That is the start of a lot of Stinky Cheese's combos. So if that if the uh, spin dash is missed time, they're going to go right into that wall of pain, and all of a sudden they're eating a lot of damage. But if they time it for the end of the pound, then all of a sudden it's Stinky Cheese. So it's almost like a stare down. Who blinks first? The game of chicken. <laughs> yeah, that is that is definitely an accurate statement. As do want to remind you all, Maris, in terms of the overall crew battle, currently holds the lead, but only in the overall crew battle. Uh, in this current game, they are going to be a little bit behind. Um, only a stock behind, but given based on how this goes against uh, Stinky Cheese, it could be Maris retaking the lead. So that. I'll be on the, it's a very shaky lead that they have. Only one stock. They have to be very cautious. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I think Jigglypuff could probably pull through. Because yeah, with, with even with Sonic having a lot of control over the stage, it there's still a bit of a disadvantage there with with the stock difference. And I we also don't know if we're, if we're getting Sonic. We might have Joker. We might have Link. We don't know. There's, there's plenty of options here, and I'm very, I'm very, uh, very hyped to see what, what's going to come out. 
It's going to be the Sonic at the oh, end of the day. the Sonic. All right. And, well, with all that burst, again, Jigglypuff is one of the slowest on the ground in the game, but quite fast in the air. Actually, the fastest aerial acceleration in the game. You know, Sonic, again, very fast on the ground, but once you jump in, up in the air, there are a little more issues. We'll see if either of them are able to leverage that, opening this up. That was a clean hit. Yeah. So th you're right. I think this is definitely going to become a battle over Ooh. the stage because while, while Jigglypuff does control a lot of a lot of the area around and above the stage, I do think Sonic might have the upper hand here, just because mm -hmm. of that horizontal horizontal advantage. You can see one dash back puts uh, Chris entirely out of every single one of Stinky Cheese's burst options. B right there, not able to quite follow up. He had a shield, edge guard Ooh. situation. He, this is where Sticky Cheese shines, but oh, Chris is able to just drift back onto stage and invalidate any attempt to edge guard. Oh, that was a chance. Did you drop it that time? Maybe getting a little overzealous. Chris is actually struggling. The uh oh, oh. Might have a recovery problem here. No, unfortunate SD right there. But Stinky Cheese three. can bring this back. Ooh. Yeah, oh. and I think you're right with that. That Julie Puff control theory. That's uh, definitely based in fact. Yeah, but down a stock right here. I mean, oh, hold on. Break oh. down there to send uh, Chris towards the outer side of the stage. Didn't look like Stinky Cheese was ready for which side that was going to be sending. But there we go. Drift back with the down air to keep pushing Chris out. And they get the stock. Oh. Chris burned their resources with that spin dash. They couldn't get the double jump out. And that means Stinky Cheese is on even footing with Chris Ochiha. Dead even game between Maris and Albion. Oh. Ooh, this is definitely going to be this is definitely going to be an interesting one. Oh. Going to off stage. Chris is struggling a little bit here. Needs to get that one hit. There we go. It was that enough to reset their neutral. Stinky Cheese goes right into the fully charged up smash. Oh no. Oh, jab lock oh. doesn't get it. Doesn't ever commit right there. Nairs doesn't have a jump right now. Only an up B. Is this enough for Stinky Cheese to finish them off? No. Stinky Cheese just lets them air dodge right to stage. Oh. There it is. Oh, no. another recovery issue. There the it is. Pineapple. Uh, and that's when you when you like bump your head on the bottom of the stage right there and can't quite get all the way up to the ledge. That's called a pineapple. Uh, uh I could explain why, that, but it's stupid. Um, <laughs> is, that, is that like when you know it's just over? Yeah. It's just it, that's that's the final one. It's like you said, a little bit of a recovery issue. Either way. Down to their last player, and this is looking eerily familiar right now, Opossumus. One stock for Chink Stinky Cheese, two players for Maris, one last representative for the side of Albion to keep themselves in this set. Oh, yeah. Is it this? If this goes, then it's it's pretty much over then. Mm -hmm. it's then, then we're, we're out. <laughs> That's that simple. Yeah. surely hope it doesn't uh, happen. I... I, I do I, mean, I do believe uh I don't know who they're putting in for our final final three stocks, but all I know is uh we definitely do we definitely like there's definitely good players for both teams, but I don't I know. feel like I, I did really like uh Ezra on that Samus. And Ezra did have a good gameplay against the Jigglypuff, and it is gonna be Watcher. Uh Watcher is Ezra's tag, I do believe. So I'm just gonna yes. call them Watcher. Um, either way, Watcher understood how to play against Stinky Cheese, and that was run away, pepper them with projectiles, look for your opportunity for a kill. If they're able to keep yeah. up that gameplay uh, into this uh, preceding match, then I've got a good feeling about this for them. Mm -hmm. Going the Young Link, okay? Oh. Okay. Now, Young Link, a very fast rushdown character who also is a zoner, um, a bar I talked about Samus having a barrage. Samus is more of an arsenal. I would say Watcher yes. has more of a barrage here on the Young Link, and you're about to see why. 
the boomerangs, the bombs, the bomb arrows. The arrows, There's a lot. just everything. The shield, like, just a lot uh -huh. to take in. It's got, like, that sword tornado situation. That's going to be a little bit hard to dodge. Especially if uh -huh. you can bait him into it. Yeah. Historically, Young Link has always been a very good pick against Jigglypuff. The one issue is Young Link does have an exploitable recovery, uh, a very linear recovery as well. If you take away that tether, not a lot Young Link can do. So Stinky is going to be looking to interrupt that if they can. Down throw. Counter hit out of that throw combo. Interesting stuff. Stinky is very well aware of what options Watcher brings to the table. Oh! This is, this is definitely quickly turning into a projectiles game. Like I said, quite a barrage. It's very difficult to deal with. Trying to roll through it, but Stinky Cheese cannot find an avenue of approach. Going through landing nares. Finally, a forward puts them all stage. Interrupts the tether recovery, which is a very high recovery, but can't get back to stage in order to punish. Oh. Great dash back right there. Tries to interrupt oh. the tether again, but misses it, and that puts him in disadvantage. One bomb arrow, one boomerang could be the stock right now. Down tilt. Any other character that would have killed, the Jiggler's buff is too light. Oh, there's that boomerang. <gasps> Kill sparks right there, and oh. there is the stock. Stinky Tooth is able to give their team a massive advantage. Ooh. It's a grounded pound by accident. Not a lot of combos out of that one. Forward throw to put. Watch your off stage. Goes for it again. Is this it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the call for that. Yeah, boot to the face is all Watcher needs at 150% against the second lightest character in the game to send them straight into the blast zone. And two stocks left for Albion against three from Maris. That's it's how we're in this It's going to be an uphill battle, but... I think we I think we could do it. I agree. But, you know, it's, I don't know. It it's definitely could go both ways here. I, I, yeah. I mean, we've definitely had we definitely had players before just tear through with two stocks or less. I mean, we saw it from Maris and we saw it uh previously from um Cyclone earlier in this very game. Mm -hmm. So, if we have a Cyclone-esque performance from Watcher could be Maris going down. Could be Gus going to a third crew battle. However, you saw how Rograt kind of dismantled them last time. See true, if they're able to true. see if we're able to uh, mimic that magic once again because it is going to be Rograt coming in on the Greninja once again. Oh, alrighty. Excited to see what happens this time. Yeah. Um. Rograt in general has always been very very consistent in the way they approach things and I talked about uh Greninja's very high vertical burst in that jump but also has very good ground movement the weird thing is Greninja can't really move diagonally that well can't really drift in can't really drift up and diagonal so think of Greninja's axis of movement as a giant plus sign they can come from above you they can come from right at you they can come from behind you but they're not really going to be coming in diagonally that often uh they're it's very risky to do that as Greninja. So that, if you since you know that, that is what a Watcher needs to cover with all their projectiles. They need to be intelligent about how they place them. If they think they're going to be coming from above, they need to toss that bomb up. If they're coming from the front, you got to throw the boomerang out. You've got to be ready to batter them away from whatever avenue they're choosing to attack you from. It's definitely going to be definitely going to be a game of mind games in this. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because it's just. With all that movement, tracking is definitely going to be important this time. Tracking and just being as precise as possible. Because one screw-up could cost it. It's only two stocks. Mm-hmm. And that is a very crucial factor. We have seen in the past, one little mistake means a stock at early percent. We saw from Chris Uchiha earlier, just one mistake, and all of a sudden a very even game was very uneven against Stinky Cheese. So if they're able to bring this back here and now, well, you can't be making any mistakes. Watcher needs to be on point with the covers, with the tether, with the up B. We'll see if they're able to do that here against Rograt. All righty. And here we go.
starting out with the projectiles. Like I said, covering that vertical or uh, horizontal axis right now, being like, okay, you cannot be on the ground. So where does Rograk go? Right above. The other place where Greninja really likes to attack from. But Greninja is very fast, maneuvering between those two angles. And you can see Ezra is struggling to cover both at once. For now, Watcher is keeping Rograk completely zoned out, though. Yeah, it's working pretty well. Oh, only two hits. Doesn't get a full combo. And that Water Shuriken is another very important uh, aspect of this matchup. That Water Shuriken is able to uh, burst through a lot of Watcher's options. But right now, Rograt is being thoroughly zoned out. They can't really lay a finger. Watch it. Mm -hmm. so don't this is okay. going to be a very tense match. It's, so far, it seems to just... Zoning is working so effectively, but recovery is going to be difficult to get back oh to that place. Oh my god! Oh! It was a tense match up until that moment. Up until Watcher made one mistake and up B where they should not have. And all of a sudden, Rograt oh. obliterated them with the Shadow Sneak. That was... That was incredible. Yes, it right, right, was. Right, right. Ezra goes in. Just got to range him out. Oh. Okay. Water sure can no, keep that Ezra! Uh, I talked about no mistakes, but that is an unfortunate way to end it off. But with the three stock that will be Rograt coming out as the winner for Marist. And that'll be Maris taking this crew battle 2-0. Good job, Rograt. <laughs> and, uh, Just well played yeah. match. Well, with that, uh, we are going to go very soon to a very quick break. And when we return, hopefully we can talk to Stinky Cheese or whoever they want to send in from Marist and get a little more insight on how that game went. So see you all in a couple of minutes. Ooh. Oh, that is a brutal shield break to open things up into the Ford Smash. Very big fan of that down smash, and I don't blame them, but grabbing right through the super armor with my Dion retakes the stage for the time being, oh. and finally, the back air still away, but Ezra is able to recover. Use the gadgets. Another one. Can they make oh, it back? I no! Don't, I don't think they're recovering. Edgar that they want, but going very low. They get caught Dude. by one thing right here. Ooh, that was dangerous. Oh, missed the tether. Definitely shouldn't have oh. risked that. Oh, the line protect. Ezra has definitely cleaned up their gameplay since that first stock, but one mistake will be there, and they missed there the tether, is. and that's the one mistake. A little scary, this but Ezra holds tense. on. He goes in, but oh. ooh, just a little bit underneath it, right into the spike. Cyclone showing their aggression off stage. Ooh. That was ooh. that's definitely a hard spike to recover from. Oh, here here it comes. It's gonna decide. Off the edge. They're just trying to recover, but the Nair does catch them. Oh, that was a rest oh. right there, and Sticky Cheek didn't pull the trigger. I do like that, though. Consistent damage. And keep breathing online again. One move will kill. There it is. Um, not quite. Uh, the deep don't, breathing. Don't they kill at 98? Ooh, oh, not quite. Not... I, I believe Luigi himself actually has a lot more. Not not quite offensive options, Ooh. but definitely has just oh. options in general. Luigi Cyclone, that wind oh. box, that that tornado right there from Cyclone literally sucks the opponent in and kills them. But the side being oh, decent recovery. They, they live oh. back. What? Either oh. way, gets caught by the Ford Smash right there. Sure. For them to get off ledge, they run away. Paralyzer, but they can't get a follow up. Can't break that shield. Oh! Oh! There it is. Oh yes, my! Yes. Cyclone is really good at preserving their resources off stage. That chase right here. Oh, misses it. 
and that's gonna be the stop. This might be I uh Oh Ooh. It's the landing. Puff comes down is. and outer side of the stage. Didn't look like Stinky Cheese was ready for which side that was gonna be sending, but there we go. Drift's back with the down air to keep pushing Chris out. And they get the Oh, there's that boomerang. <gasps> Kill Sparks right there, and oh. there is the stocks. So far, it seems to just... The zoning Ooh. is working so effectively, but recovery is going to be difficult to get back oh to that place. Oh my god! Oh! So many other jobs as well that That's can right. translate out of this experience in esports. The the only path is not just as a player. Um, I think all of us are representative of jobs in esports, but it, it it mirrors traditional sports in pretty much the same way. You've got you know broadcasters, you've got production people, you've got marketing and sales, and um, now nil and and things like that, but. Um, really, esports is kind of a great accelerator, accelerator uh, for a lot of new businesses that are coming up in the metaverse and Web3. And there's a lot of new technology that is going to be needed. And so these these STEM students that are also esports athletes are really the the future workforce and leaders of tomorrow. And you know, us as well as all of our brand partners that we work with really recognize this. And I think that's really, you know, a key driver of why brands are in this space. They want to be part of building that future workforce and leadership and shaping it and supporting it. So, yeah, it's 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 very it's been a very interesting space to watch. And we, we offer such a big, uh, you know, we offer such a big counterpart to traditional sports also because. When it's a counterpart, but it's also the same, is what I'm trying to say. Because it, it, when you're traditional sports and they're done after their two a day workout and they're done after their practice scrim, they're coming home to play Call of Duty and relax and put their feet up and get a drink and play video games. It grows their brain, problem solving skills, uh, and, and their hand eye coordination while they're home. Hand eye coordination, if you're a football player, massive skill, massive skill. Mm -hmm. So um, it helps build those things while they're off the field. And then for us, vice versa, if you're an esports athlete, one of the errors I had growing up when I was competing in esports is that I was not active enough. I, I played sports, I competed a little bit, but I wasn't active enough truly when I look at it. So that's one area that esports players can learn from in terms of activity and physical and the marrying of both. People say, oh, sports and esports, video games. Not really. We're just kind of the tech industry's competitive uh, form of um, competition as to where traditional sports are more physical hands-on. So I believe in the marrying of these two sectors and that they actually live together while also being counterparts. Well, I think I think then to speak to something about marrying, right, from traditional to esports, um, that to me speaks to this whole new thing, at least, again, from you guys, right, you guys have more traditional sports background, right, Paul, Lee, Mike, um, and all that, but I think, let's talk NIL then, because I think that's something that I think is really interesting, that, at least when I heard about it, right, of what we're trying to do with, you know, esports athletes, schools, programs in general, um, because it wasn't something you would think normally, right? You could understand, right, football player on the field, star quarterback. It makes sense, right? The guy is somebody that everybody knows on campus, whether you're, you know, whether you're on the team, off the team, or you're just going to the school. It makes sense. But I think, you know, nowadays it's it's not as common or people don't think that they could be somebody that their name is out there, right? Or that they know they're known, right? As as we're growing the space, as we're, we're putting this together, it almost feels really interesting that, you know, star your star entry, you know, your star entry in Valorant or your your star forward on Rocket League, right? Whatever the case might be, now 
they can have nil deals it's a it's a thing out yeah. there and, and i think i don't know maybe mike you want to start off but yeah like, yeah, yeah i think yeah thank you for teeing that up so uh i was talking for too long and i uh, i forgot to bring nil into the mix so it's a common occurrence uh, occupational hazard so i would say that uh so nil for for uh, i'm sure most of you watching understand what it is but nil stands for name image and likeness name image and likeness that term has been utilized to describe the transition of traditional student athletes ncaa athletes and their ability to monetize their name image and likeness it went live july 1st 20 of 21 and it has continued over the course of the last 14 nearly 14 months now uh it's an interesting term because it's been co-opted to describe the NCAA's approach to student athletes being able to make endorsement money or uh, be able to monetize any part of their name. Welcome back, everybody. It's Keela Miles and Apossumus back with two representatives from Marist College. We have here with us Stinky Cheese and Ragra, who just, just saw tearing, tearing, it tearing it up in the crew in the battle. Crew How are you all you doing? doing? I'm chilling. <laughs> And this is my friend Rograt. I think he's chilling too. He's doing pretty well. I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm Rograt. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you yeah, were both you're doing, doing pretty, pretty, pretty well. well. Uh, so, so that's the that's first, first thing, thing I gotta I ask. ask. Um, um, any, particular any particular highlights, highlights from, from this, this match, match from the two, two of you? Of you? Like, like anything you're particularly you proud of? I think, I think my <laughs> highlight was taking that we fit to the last stock. So uh, Rograt only had to take one stock. I think that was pretty impressive on my part. Um, Honestly, I'm, I mean, unfortunately, Blue, uh, how do you pronounce it? Is it Blue Midian or Blue Midian? It's Blue, it's, it, it's blue, blue, blue Phantom. Blue, blue something. Blue something. Opportunity, but he's one of the new freshmen that we have. He's a, he's a fantastic player. He's I something mean, else. Last week, he took out an entire school by himself. And then the week before that, he took out our rivals, Iona College, by himself. He, he beat one of them without dropping a stock. Mm -hmm, exactly. It was, it was something else. Yeah, it, was, it really, it was a spectacular. Nine stock. Yeah, it was insane. It, it was, wow. it was something else. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Ah, I wanted to know how you guys' season's been going so far. Oh, our our season's been great. I mean, like we've been we've been cooking up a couple of players in the kitchen. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. for sure. They they they've been try they've been training hard. But you know what? It's just him and I, and it's like it reminds me of what Russell Wilson says every time. <laughs> Broncos country, let's ride. And it's his final year here, so you know what? Um, we're trying to win. Obviously, the MAC league. But you know what? It's nice to get like uh, competition from other schools as well. That's not mac you know yeah so so far this season our team has done so well i usually play the i usually play the three i'm usually the closer this is the first time i've played all season so like i think that kind of speaks to our roster's strength uh because i just like haven't had to play roster as in blue as in blue, blue yeah, blue, yeah blue, 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 blue 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 is blue, our roster blue. Yeah. yeah yeah he's yeah. our roster. yeah and i gotta ask about that roster so I, I i can't help but notice we haven't seen a lot of familiar faces from last year a lot of graduations a lot of transfers yeah that sort of thing so, yeah, it, it's it, it's really unfortunate because one of our best players, Relax, actually took up trade school. He's he's now he wants to be a plumber, and he hates it. But his trade school doesn't have a smash team, so he's like going to locals, and he's he's super miserable. Um, <laughs> it, it, it just sucks because he he really was um, a freak of nature, as some would say. Uh, mm -hmm. What else? Oh yeah, we lost uh, we lost a vegetable. What was his name? Like carrot. Carrot. Oh, yeah, zucchini. 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 Yeah, yeah, we, lost, yeah. we lost zucchini. Yeah, zucchini. Um, Abso moved. <laughs> he moved. Yeah. He's in Hawaii. Yeah. Abso, you wouldn't believe it. He's in Hawaii. It's crazy right now. Yeah, tell him to say hi to um, Kate's head. Damn. Oh. I think, what happened to Luke? I couldn't I, tell you. I, I have no idea. I think Luke's like running a multi million dollar business or something. <laughs> Um, I haven't heard from him. He it, cut it, me it, off. It, it's a, he cut all of us off. He probably knew we were going to ask him for money or something. But you know what? It, it just sucks that we lost so much good talent. But you know what? These freshmen, such as Blue, i.e. example, and yep. another like player that we've been cooking up secretly that we haven't released public yet. I love Palu. Yes, I love Palu123. Um, he's our, our – um, actually, we don't even want to say who he plays because it's so like, like top secret – um, but you'll see him <laughs> once in a while, you know. And these players are very, very good. They're very hard hitters, and they have the ability to take down an entire school by themselves. Yep. Very nice. Um, and as a quick follow-up question, real quick, 
Stinky Cheese uh, 782, were you perhaps influential at all in I Love Palu 123 choosing their name? Or, like, was that independent? No comment. Um, okay. We're still going through the legal process of that right now, of changing his legal tag to I Love Palu 123. But... <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, hopefully in the future it goes through and then I can say whether or not I did influence it um, another player that we have on our B roster that I didn't influence is um, Chubby Wanna Soup yeah yeah, that, yeah that's, a, that's another another one yeah <laughs> okay he's actually playing right now against uh, what is it the Naval Academy yeah he's playing against yeah, a bunch of military yeah, guys right know. now they have some players like G Extreme, Sonics Sonics uh, yeah they're gonna lose <laughs> to, uh, Lieutenant Tony Pajamas I think that's what Grimek just said his name I thought was. that was his position something yeah. like that yeah. oh have yeah. fun against Fisher wow <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't see it. What's so funny? Do you? It's Chubby want a soup. I mean, he's really good. He yeah, plays a uh, Piranha Plant and Game and Watch. <laughs> I wish I was joking, yeah. but he's nice on the sticks. Yeah. So I'll say anything. Yeah. He's nice. Of course, Game and Watch. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, uh, questions that you guys have for us? Like fire away. Like I, I just love. I love uh, the interviews and everything. Yeah. How How has it been like filling the vacuum of the older players? Has it been like? Have all of the incoming freshmen been doing like really well, or have you like had that, some what, trouble like training? What what an amazing question! Because when I came into the role as captain, me and Chris, we were like, "Dang, we are really screwed this year. We're gonna get like some freshman mess player." Yeah. Um, and no, like we we actually have a lot of decent freshmen this year, such as decent, really good. not not decent is not the word that I would use. No. Decent when they first started. All right, yeah. But now true. they're really good. Yeah, such as such as the Piranha Plant, Chubby Wanna Soup, and I Love Palu One Two Three, and Blue My Dion, yep. um, who who you saw play today. But you know what? We we filled the roles really well, um, or filled the holes really well, as some would say. And uh, we have a big roster this year. We just um we hired a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, we have a strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> so um, we're gonna we're, be like huge be in the, Atlantic City. So we're be hitting the gym, like twice a week, or twice a week, I think. Um, yeah. his uh, his tag is actually Wavy Broccoli. Um, he's a Steve player. We told him to go for Dirt Brock, but he just wouldn't listen. Dirt to Brock, us. I thought was the better name, but yeah. that's just me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but All yeah, right. he right. has to be in and out of the gym. <clears throat> All right, then. Cool. Then simple question: uh, How much you benching? Oh, Chris. <laughs> uh, well, the thing with me is, I, I really How about you? Like, when I go to the gym, like that's why my he's got massive are, quads. My quads are massive. Crush um, a watermelon. Oh, in between these monstrous thighs, my friend, not on stream. Yeah, not on stream. And then I probably bench probably how much do you weigh, kilo? <laughs> uh, about one sixty. <laughs> Uh, I probably bench like two hundred. So okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll see you at land. <laughs> All right, uh, so with that, I think we're just about to wrap things up. So any final statements, any bravado that you want to spew out, any uh, brave claims you want to make about your results going into the later parts oh, of the no, season? Uh, no brave claims. Um, we just want to shout out all of our alumni. They are amazing. And also, we are holding a big tournament on November 12th. Please come to Marist College. And um, one other thing is me and Chris want to show you, Kilo, our secret handshake. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. Awesome. Very complex. Demonstrates how good you are at tech, obviously. Um, I can see the things in actions. But He's a Jigglypuff and... player. What are you talking about? He plays Jigglypuff. You mean tech. Oh. Listen, listen, I got the respect. I got the respect. Anyways, though, Stinky Cheese and Rograt, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming on. And uh, best of luck in the rest of your season. Great seeing you, Kilo. Thank you so much. Yeah. And with that, we are also going to be signing out. Uh, thank, uh, thank you so, you so much. much, Professor Layton on production. And, of course, Apostomus for joining me on the mic. And with that. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we will be seeing you uh, another week. Take it easy, everybody. See you next time. Right. We've had athletes endorsing brands for over 100 years. Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees was endorsing brands 100 years ago, and it has continued 
onward from baseball cards all the way through now where we have lots of different integrations of how uh, influencers can monetize their followings. So what I would say on the traditional side is it's still a very young space. There are a lot of stories out there regarding NIL that tend to focus on the negative or how out of control, I put in air quotes, it has gotten. But there is still a burgeoning marketplace for many more student athletes that are involved. About 17% of NCAA athletes are currently involved in NIL, but 65% more than that want to get involved and are curious how to get started. On the flip side, brands are challenged with a few different things in the space. There are 10,000 professional athletes in the United States. Once July 1st, 2021 hit, and you dump every NCAA athlete into that space, that's another half million. So brands that maybe didn't have a dedicated athlete strategy when there were 10,000, now have 500,000 plus that 10,000 to figure out how to activate who they are. That's a lot. I understand brands hesitancy in some instances, but I can tell you that companies like us are on a daily basis, educating brands and student athletes as to the software you can use, the types of activations you can get involved in, and how to utilize your followings. Or if you don't have to or want to be a social media star, are there ways in which you can monetize it? Now, I know I describe that under the umbrella of the NCAA, but I see it as being no different in esports. I think there are massive opportunities for people with followings to be able to use that and connect with brands. I think a company like us can help you to do that. And then beyond that, we can make sure that those transactions are safe for you. I think there are opportunities, not just at the individual competitor level, but at the program level to have a sponsorship go to that. I'm sure some of you out there listening and watching already have deals like that in place, but I think we can continue to enhance, augment those deals and make them more comprehensive and make them, uh, first of all, I think, Product deals are perfectly fine, but I think we can get beyond that and grow some of these deals to a greater extent. Pauly, thoughts on that? Yeah, um, you know, you, what you said is right. So I'll put it in for layman's terms here for just the esports players because I talk to so many of our yeah. athletes that compete in our CECC series that are currently still in college. And basically what, what, what when Mike Blewett says NIL, what he's referring to is just sim very simple. If a brand or any sort of anyone wants to use your school's name, name or your name or your brand or anything with you, there is a deal for you that can be put in place, whether it's product deal, whether it's a paid endorsement, you can, whether you're a macro influencer or whether you're a micro influencer, you can be paid for your services. So uh, most of the people, when I talk to them, most of the, I won't say people, college athletes, they are, uh, you know, intimidated by the word. They don't really know what it means. They've never done anything with it before. And that's what it means. Any single time a brand or anyone at all wants to use your name or do a, a deal with you or do so, some sort of activation with you or your school, that's basically what the layman's terms, the NIL uh, meaning comes from. And uh, it, 